Hello everyone and welcome to So Many Games Little Time. Today we will be playing Black Rose Wars Rebirth and we're going to try and play with three avatars. So only one human player, that being myself. I will be playing as Ariana. She's here. I'll be playing against Hastur, who is in the middle and he is the actual Black Rose Wars avatar. We'll be playing against uh, Jukas here, who is an avatar but will function as a normal mage. And then we also have the Possessed, which is also an avatar but will function as a normal mage. For the Possessed, you take a regular mage token uh, figure and uh, then they will be, you know, they will function as the Possessed. So what is Black Rose Wars? Well, let's explain it in very simple terms. It is just four mages blasting the hell out of each other. And whoever does the most damage at the end of the game, or gathers the most points, I should say, um, they will uh, become victorious. So how does that work exactly? Well, let's say I do damage to Jukas, then let's say four damage. I will give Jukas four of my, uh, well, four of my cubes which will be uh, subtracted from his health. And then after he dies, he has 11 health, as you can see here. Um, after he dies, whoever does the most damage will get a certain amount of points, and second player, third player, and so on. And if you're the only one who did damage, you'll get extra points, and so on. Um, there's some differences in the game when you play with avatars. For example, this deck is different. These are the event cards. They happen in the first phase. And basically what the Black Rose Wars, how about how the Black Rose affects the game. So there are different phases when the game starts. The first phase is the Black Rose phase. So you would review an event and then it would happen. So for example, let's do the first one. So traces, traces of texture. If the avatar is in any of those three rooms, the Black Rose places two uh, instability tokens in a room from the avatar. So basically there's zero, that means where the avatar is. And this means this happens in the Black Rose phase. There's a zero here, means the Black Rose gets zero points. And when it leaves, the Black Rose gets zero points. Also, it is placed in the first position. All right, so it goes here. So every round it will move one step to the right until it reaches here where it is discarded. So this will happen three times. So once again, if the avatar is in any of those rooms, the Black Rose places two instabilities tokens in that room during this phase actually. So that um, avatar is uh, Hastur, like we said. He's in the Black Rose room, so he's not in one of the uh, rooms depicted there, so nothing happens. What are those instability tokens? Well, there, there's also these tokens. They don't, they're not only used for damage, they're also used for instability. They will be placed in these uh, spots, okay? I turned off the second light because the glare was too much. Um, maybe you see a visual difference, maybe not, but let's continue. So once all these spots fill up, we will flip the room, okay? So why is why would that be special? Well, let's take a look at maybe sanct no, Sanctuary might be the easiest one to take. So let's take a look at Sanctuary, all right? So you can see the name of Sanctuary and you can see it has a power. In this case, a, a mage symbol, draw one quest. Now. If Sanctuary is built, you flip it over, it looks much prettier now, but also it will get one of these tokens here, Sanctuary, and then it falls down, get it here, this will go on top, and then suddenly the power is different. You can heal three, uh, or one of your uh, summons, um, they're called differently here, I'll mention it later, they will heal three. So basically, these rooms, in this case the golden rooms, they're all the same when they are not built yet, but when they are built, they will all have different powers. So in the beginning it's all the same, afterwards it's different. So every color has the same powers. For example, the gray ones, the crypt, the cemetery, and the sacrificial altar, they all summon a cadaver, for example. All right, so basically that uh, happens during the Black Rose phase. Then it also says the mage on the right of the first player draws an event card. Um, okay, first of all, the events move to the right, then it's drawn, which is what we just did. Then starting from the left card, you do whatever it says during this phase. And then uh, there's 
optional. If you have a quest card as a mage, then you can discard it. And if you don't have one, you need to take one. So I need to take one of these quest cards. Now you can see it's like a, it's not a half moon, but a third moon, I guess, a banana moon. Uh, this means the first phase of the game, the first part of the game. You'll see that uh, on the uh, cards of the avatars as well. You see it here as well. Once somebody reaches six points, then we will go to the next phase, the half moon phase, and all these decks will be replaced with the second part. For example, then cards like this will come out. And then the third phase will be a full moon. All right. And then when someone reaches 30 points, the game will end. So this is my quest. Let's take a look. Uh, uh, it's a field test. So it says, after you resolve a, a battle room effect, place one cube on this card. The first time you do it, reveal this card. And then uh, you get the results here, which means to two um, characters, two models, I can inflict two damage. And also I can place one uh, token in a room. So I'm going to leave it face up. All right, so that is the next stop. Then we have uh, in play order, each mage with no active quest, draw this one, okay. And then if you have too many quests, if you look here, it says I can have two quests completed, so solved, and uh, active ones. So now I have one here. And uh, so yeah, I don't have to discard anything, but if you have more than, one, more than two, according to my sheet, then you have to discard. Okay, then we have the study phase, and that is basically the meat and bones of the game. Um, because in study, you're basically going to, well, not the meat and bones, it's part of the meat and bones. Let's say it's a starter. Because here you're going to start um, getting cards and, and, and making your grimoire, which is your deck of spells. But first of all, in the study phase, you check if there's any cards here that has a study effect. No, there are not. And then each mage draws two cards from their grimoire. Now, starting the game, I had to choose one of these uh, decks here. So we have Nightmare, Alchemy, Shamanic, Hex, Agony, and Technomancy. Now, Ariana is pretty good at dealing with uh, summons. So the summons are... For example, this card will show you that she's good at that because she her special power is assembly line. It says summon a cadaver and assign an upgrade of your choice to it. It activates. This basically means it's a it's, it's, a, it's a global spell. Um, this means you have to, to uh, fo um, choose a uh, minion. Um, then this is the room where she is in. So I can't go farther. I can't summon them in a different room. But there's also a black version. And it says, remove one of your undead with an assigned upgrade. So a cadaver is an undead. If you do, summon a colossus in any room across the whole lodge, because everything together is the lodge, and assign an upgrade of your choice to it. So it's a pretty powerful spell. And when you do these spells, by the way, in the middle, if there's like one of these circles, that means you put a token in the room where you are at. Now I have three cards of those, but one of them starts in my deck. And in the beginning of the game, I also choose one of these. So for example, I'll show you which one I chose, which is Technomancy. So when you choose Technomancy, first of all, every school of magic has a description of what it does. Um, for example, here it's talking about evocations. Okay, those are the minions, right? So talking about upgrades and so on. It also shows you what is in, what kind of cards are in that deck, uh, what kind of symbols are on them. And then let's say I choose the School of Magic, which I did. I choose either the Creator set or the Thanatos set. Now, in this case, I chose the Creator set. So I took those six cards from the deck and then added my own personal card, shuffled them, and then put one in a discard. That is the setup. So even if you decide to, you can technically play this game uh, 12 times and always choose a different school to start with and your experience will always be different Of course, it will already be different because other people will also use different things So that was basically my setup. Let's first look at the card that was discarded So I won't be able to use this card anytime soon So the white side living liquid is assign the regenerating Icar upgrade to the target if you do heal two to yourself 
And then the other one is discard an upgrade assigned to the target if you do place three cubes in a uh, room from the target. So this means it can be one of my minions two spots away. And this means with the star, it can be a minion anywhere on the lodge. Okay. Okay. And those, by the way, these symbols, they're often important for some other cards like alchemy, where they say if you activated these symbols previously, then you can do something else. So you know that. But this is, of course, something I can't use. It's in the discard. So let's draw two cards of my deck. All right. So I drew Vigorous Infusion. Assign the Muscular Implant upgrade to the target. It activates under your control. So we'll take a look at that in a minute. And then here, inflict three damage. Move the target up one. Move the target up to one. So basically, you do damage and then move them somewhere. So you can see this is instant, and this is for a target, a model, could be a mage, could be a minion, whatever, up to two spaces away. This one is just globally, and this is just for a minion anywhere. So the muscular implants, so these are all the implants here. So let's see, um, muscular implants would say this model has plus one damage which of course can be pretty good. So talking about those models, I'll give you uh, an example of uh, a cadaver, one of the small guys. We can see here, they have movement of two, damage of two, and a health of two. And if it has an upgrade in this case, it would get plus one health. So if you add the muscular one, it would have three health and three damage. Okay, and you can maximum only have three different uh, evocations and that is for everybody and only one of them can be big like this is a colossus it's much bigger you only have one of these big bases so that's vigorous infusion i also have assembly line which i already explained so i start with her skill which is pretty nice now that is not all you don't just have two cards because the next phase is each mage draws four from any school of magic in the library and then discards two of those cards in the corresponding school discard pile discard cards from your hand that exceeds your hand limit and the hand limit here is eight so you can see my health is 10. the health is actually really fun that it's 10 because it has an arrow where it's 10. so you can see two four six eight ten all right so each card has an arrow to how far it goes hand limit of eight i'll do two melee damage if i decide to punch someone or kick i guess two movement and this was about the quest that i already mentioned so now i can take four cards i can take four in one deck i can have one 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 it doesn't matter the only deck that i can't choose from is the one all the way over here which is the forgotten deck the only way you can get a card from there is in the black rose room where they say discard three spells and then draw one forgotten spell they are really powerful spells okay so i'm going to take a hex card simply because I haven't taken one of, well, many of those. So let's see what it does. Bad luck. Another mage places a cube, and then it's a trap. Target the room where that mage placed one, convert two. So basically, I'm telling, hey, you know, possessed, you can put a cube there. And let's let's say, let's say the, the possessed already had one there, all right? Say, so, oh, you can put one there, now they have two, but then I convert two. So then I replace these two white ones with two of my pink ones, purple ones. So I should have told you that before as well. If you look uh, at, the, at the room, you can see here, three, one, one. Three uh, are the points that you get when you have the most cubes, when it flips. If you're the only one, you get four. If you tie with someone, both of you get two, all right? And then second place one, third place one. Now you can see some rooms have a lot more cubes so the points are more uh are higher for example the throne room has six points and the black rose room has also six points yeah but then rooms like the garden over here it's only two points because it's four cubes all right so that's bad luck the other side of the card is another main mage obtains a victory token like the trophy token like this that's when you get when you do the final blow not when you do the most damage the final blow gets the trophy token and it gives you points at the end of the game so target that mage steal one token and steal one point so basically the, the mage gets one but then you steal one and you get a point okay that's kind of nice these are both traps so the way traps work i'll explain in a second 
So bad luck, let's do a nightmare because nightmare is a little bit special. Sometimes you can attach, oh, there you go. It's already that one. Let's see if I can take one, show an example. So this is uh, FLTs, I guess. Draw one event, so from there. For each event on the event board, assign an Umbra to a mage anywhere. Gain one point for each Umbra in the lodge, maximum five points. So these Umbras are cool, they're these guys, because they literally attach themselves. Like, for example, let's take him as an example, the Possessed. It just slots next to them. So basically, later on, we'll have a, a phase where these guys activate, and then they'll always do damage. You know, because you can see they have like a a knife and everything, a dagger. Um, and of course, I get points for having more of these. And then um, the other one: look at the number of quests from the quest deck of the current moon equal to the number of nightmares in the lodge. Draw one of them and discard the others. Gain one point. Oh, okay. So equal to so if I have two nightmares out, then I can draw two quests and then decide to keep one. Okay, I guess that's fine. Not sure if I'm gonna keep it. I'll show you nightmare as well as an example, because that sometimes goes with those icons. Let's we'll see. Is the Athenor eruption. So enhancement. Yeah. So that means if I had spells with these two tokens before this is activated. It says inflict one damage, then shield and trap spells do not trigger due to this effect. Okay, so basically you can do damage and then if they're protected for some reason, it doesn't happen. And also inflict three damage. But the enhancement only happens if you have those icons, but three damage happens for sure. And here, uh, enhancement with this icon, for each icon of the, that kind on the active side of your revealed uh, spells, Place one cube in a room from the target, inflict two damage. So yeah, the, those ones you really have to make sure you get those icons. And just a quick check here, I have none of those icons. So that's probably gonna get uh, removed. I'm not gonna keep it. Let's do Shamanic as the fourth one. I should probably be drawing from Technomancy, honestly. Uh, you also have Agony. That means you do damage, but you, some, you also damage yourself often. So here it's a uh, dominion token. So they totem, they place totems out. Summon a totem and place two uh, cubes, which is pretty good to get quick points there. Or target a totem. Choose a uh, evocation from the target totem. It activates under your control. Choose a different one from the target totem. It activates under your control. Remove the target totem. So basically, let's say I put a totem here and they have uh, evocations somewhere there because it can be up to two spaces away. I can activate two of them as if they were mine and make them attack their uh, masters. But that's only when I already have a totem. So this card would allow me to put out a totem, but then I have to hope the totem will survive or whatever until, uh, yeah, until I can use it. So in this case, what I'm gonna keep is, I'm gonna keep the, the nightmare and the bad luck these two I will uh, get rid of. Well, no, actually, no. Um, kind of like the trap. But it convert. No, I'm going to keep the Nightmare and the Totem. The other two I'll discard. Now, normally you discard to those decks, but because of a limited space, I'm just going to discard it um, off screen in a pile. So I'll uh, fix that all later. Okay, so now I end up with these four cards, all right? So, next up is then, um, at this point, I have these four cards. Now, I can choose to discard one of these and basically remove them out of the game forever to thin my deck. But I don't feel the need to, so I'm not going to do that. And then the next phase is the meat and bones of the game, and that is a preparation phase. So, you can choose Minimum two, maximum four spells, and put them on your mage sheet. So how does that work exactly? You've got this lightning one, and then you've got one, two, and three. Now, the lightning one is a spell you can do at any time. Of course, you have to use an action for it. But the other three, you have to do in order. So for example, if I put my uh, dominion totem at the end, I won't be able to activate the beginning of the round because I'm gonna to have to go through these three first before I reach this one. And you put them face down as well. 
Now in my case, I'm gonna put them face up because I'm playing solo. <laughs> I don't need to hide, right? But for uh, if you play with other people, you'll be playing them face down. Of course, you can always peek at them, okay? So in my case, I'm going to uh, put assembly line here because I wanna be able to do that quickly. Same thing with the vigorous infusion because I can actually uh, combine these, potentially, actually no, I'm like this. This means attacking someone. Um, I'm gonna do this second, this first, because this allows me to assign an Umbra to a, a mage anywhere in the lodge. So I don't have to be anywhere specific. Infusion means I can damage people, but then I'm probably gonna be outside already because I have to be when you're in your own room, you can't receive damage or do damage. You're always forced to move out as your first action. And then Dominion Totem can be lost, actually. Um, or maybe I'm going to do the other way around. I'm going to put my, my Totem. Yeah, I'm going to put it lost because I want it to survive as long as possible. Okay, so this is what I have now. So what I do is the moment that I, have, I, I put these tokens on, and once I've done it, I remove the token, okay? So that I know it's done. I guess you could do it the other way around as well, but it's easier for me like this, for me personally. Okay, so then the next phase we have where we, so there's a preparation phase, okay? Then once that's done, that's it. Then we go over to the action phase. So then we start from the leftmost card and activate uh, each event card, sorry, from here. Right, if there's anything to do with the event phase, but there's nothing. And then in play order, each mage performs their activation and when you, all mages cannot perform any more actions the phase ends. So what kind of actions can I actually do? So, first of all, you have these two tokens. These are physical actions, okay? So the first thing you can do is explore. And what does it mean? You move according to your speed value, which is two. So I can do like one, two, for example. And then when I explore, it means that I activate the room, which means what the power of the room is, okay? I can also use move once and activate, but that's it. I cannot move, activate, and move again. I can't do that, okay? So I can either activate first and then move, or move and then activate. Because once the, the game has a rule, whenever there's a, a full stop, you have to do the complete action. For example, if it says move full stop, that means you do the full action, and then whatever comes next, you do that one then. You can't continue uh, a previous action or whatever. So let's see what the rooms are around me. I have the Oracle room, which means I can draw one random uh, spell from my memory. So the discard pile is called the memories. So I'll be able to draw a uh, living liquid, for example, which is not bad actually. Um, here, Sacrificial Altar is Summon a Cadaver, which is also good because I'm going to have one, two, I'd, be, I'd have too many then because I'd have one Cadaver, a second Cadaver, and then, uh, sorry, one Cadaver, and then here will be the Umbra, and then another Cadaver, and then a Totem. It's too many. I only have space for three, so I'm not going to do that. And the Pleasures Room says draw one uh, spell from your Grimoire, so from here. So once again, this says Black Rose Phase, so this doesn't apply. It just depends on where he finishes his turn. All right. So we can explore. That's what I just explained. Another thing we can do is we can fight with the, with the physical movement, which means I'm just going to do a physical attack, which would be two with a person in the same room. Okay. But then I can also still activate a room. So fighting is hitting and activating. Exploring is moving and activating. Uh, in any order, as usual. And then also I can do command, and command means I activate one of my evocations. So once again, then I can decide that my evocation moves and damages someone or just moves away or whatever uh, the, 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 the minion evocation can do. So that's what these tokens are used for. You can do it twice. If you use it, you flip it over, done. Okay, so you can do that twice. For example, my first turn, I'm going to have to use one of them to get out of the room because I cannot stay in the room. Then another thing I can do is, so I can do two actions, by the way, one or two. So I can also cast a spell. So in this case, I would do uh, FELTs first or FILTs. I really don't know how to explain how to, how to, how to pronounce it. 
Um, or I can do assembly line, or I can do both, but then I'm not going to do this because this one I can do at any time. This one I can only do once per turn. Okay, so I do this when it's done. Next turn I can activate this. Next turn I can activate that. Okay, and I can combine it with one of these actions or with this one. But of course, once you've done the spell, the spell is over. All right, it's done. So I can cast the spell. Um, if it is a trap, uh, which I have none of here, then I would be, or a protection spell, I would put a token on it to show that it's active. Okay, so it can be triggered. If at the end of the round it never got triggered, I can always take it back in my hand. I'll repeat that later. Um, once again, the quick spell can be used at any time. So the only time in one turn you can do two spells if you, is when you use the quick spell and one of the others. Okay. I can also do momentum. So let's say I have no more move, but I'm here and I need to get out, or I want to just get out somewhere and I have no movement left. I can discard one of my spells to my memories and move one to this momentum. So those are basically the, 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 the actions that you can do. So it's pretty straightforward. It's not that difficult. It's more about when am I going to use what? What is the situation uh, telling me what to do? And so on. Now, for the avatars, it's pretty different because they have their own deck, okay? You can see here, sometimes on the back of the deck, they will have a uh, token, which means they have a shield. So for example, this shield has a, has, a, has a damage token, and that means when it gets damaged, it will heal twice. If it did not, if it did not, sorry here. If it's damaged, it will ignore three damage, and then it places one cube uh, for each damage it ignored. So basically you do like three damage, no damage, boom, 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 three instability tokens. So yeah, so it can be that, it can be another one. Anyway, so that's the deck. So you're going to be shuffling them. I mean, it's a turn of the avatar or one of the other mages. You flip it over and then you do what it says. So in this case, this is movement, moves towards the, the Black Rose room, okay? And then the second action is, if the target room is the uh, Black Rose room, it places two in a room. So basically, if it got there, it'll place two. If it didn't get there, it will not. Okay, I'm talking about this guy. All right, so that's how that works. Some of the more advanced ones, because the possessed ones are the basic one that came in the base box. The Jukas and uh, Hastur are expansion ones, and they have a special ability. Um, but before I talk about that, let's look at the card here. You can see possessed has 12 health, two damage and two movement. Also, when it needs to make a choice, like for example, uh, it moves towards a room, just in general, a room, then you need to check which one. For example, number one here talks about a character, right? With the most health. Then the character is with the, the, the closest room, if I'm not mistaken. And the third one is the room with the most characters and so on and so on. It's always explained in the rule books as well. You have to play a couple of times to realize what everything means. I always forget, so I always consult the rule book. But yeah, this is just flavor text. But then if you look at Jukas, by the way, this is the health, because normally, normally, we use a different board for, um, for them. But um, I decided not to use it to save space. And uh, the different board will have spaces to put the cubes. I had it here, but I think it's this one. Yes, here you go. So here you would have the health and it's easy to track. But then, like I said, I'm not using it now. I'm just doing it like this. The cubes were, sorry, the dice are from um, a different game, obviously. Yes, so let's take a look at Jukas's card because he has less health, 11 health, two damage. He only moves once, but he has teleportation. Uh, so that means sometimes on his card it will have this icon, which means it says place one vortex. You can see where he is. He's surrounded by all these kind of vortexes that you have to place and set up, and he starts in the throne room. Okay. So it says place one cube in each room with one vortex in it. Each room with all its instability slots occupied is immediately rebuilt because normally when they're occupied, they're rebuilt at the end of the round. But with him, he instantly scores, so nobody can replace uh, his cubes. So, okay, so that is his special ability, which can really be painful sometimes when he does it. Um, and then we have Hastur, which is of course from Cthulhu. It's one of the expansions. It's a once upon a time expansion, uh, FYI. 
He has 13 health. He only does one physical damage. He can move three. Um, he has the keywords traumatized, subdue, and dom the dominion. It says here, add one token to each uh, model, trauma three on each model. So how trauma and so on works, we'll see throughout the game. But basically, he's going to take away cubes from you and keep them. And then you have to do an action to get them. So the problem is when you play with three avatars like this, is there are actually no written rules. There's only, the rule is only play with one avatar, not with more than one. So um, at times I'm gonna have to make decisions. So for example, for Hustur, he has these tokens uh, that he puts on people and he takes uh, cubes away from other mages. But of course mages, the avatars, they don't have the action where they can say, I'm gonna take my cubes back. So at one point they might run out of cubes and they have no action to get their cubes back. So the way I'm gonna do it is simple. Simple. Once they run out of cubes, they will take an action to take some of the cubes back and it'll replace one of the actions on their card because that is something that I might have to do too. Um, I forgot the name of the action uh, specifically, but um, it's introspection, yes. So each avatar has their own rules and intricacies and you have the whole Rebo rebirth stator box that has a bunch of them they have three more boxes there's so many different ones you can add and remove we have six spell schools of magic here but actually i think you can go up to 10 if you add in all the expansion stuff so but we're keeping it as simple as possible right now also with jukas if you do a spell and you're in a room with a vortex token you take that vortex token and then at the end of the round, um, when you uh, basically at the end of the round, then you can exchange those uh, re those uh, two tokens to get a forgotten spell, which is pretty awesome, right? Okay, so that was the whole second phase. I spoke a bit about the avatars. It will become more clear as we play as well. So. That was the action phase. Then when the action phase is done, then we do the evocation phase. So all the evocations happen, okay? But first, which is a bit odd, in the regular game, the avatar, the, the Black Rose avatar, always goes last. So in this case, I'm gonna go first, then it's gonna be the Possessed, then it's gonna be Jukas, and then it's gonna be Hastur. During the evocation, it is the Black Rose evocations that go first. And then in play order, each evocation, evocation activates one at a time in the order their owner prefer, okay? So basically I have one that activates, okay. So, but with the Black Rose, all the evocations uh, activate. But as usual, um, there is a, um, there is a way to find out what they, they have like a schedule or rundown that says, where they're gonna go, the evocations. And of course, I'm gonna use that for all of the other avatars as well. Okay, so it's kind of predictable where they're gonna go maybe, but we'll see. After that is finished, then we have the cleanup phase. In the cleanup phase, uh, each mage can choose if they have any spells, uh, traps or protection spells, they can take it back uh, and discard all the other spells down to the, their memories. If there are any rooms that have enough cubes, then they will be rebuilt and the scores will be, of course, assigned. And um, then, of course, they'll be flipped. And then if any of the power tokens here, the points have reached this or past this, then we will go into the next phase. If it's past this, we'll go into the next phase. If it's past this, the game will end. Okay, so I think it's ready. I think we're ready to actually start the game. Uh, like I mentioned, I am first player. I already set up. So I can actually just start. First, I need to get out of there. So I'm gonna flip this token over and I'm gonna move. And so I'm not gonna summon a cadaver. The question is, do I wanna draw living liquid into my hand, which basically will allow me to heal or place three cubes in a space? I kind of like that actually. So I'm gonna go here. I'm going to activate and draw one random card, which of course is this one. I'll put it here, saying it's in my hand. Um, so that is my that was my move action. Then I have a second one that I can do. And I'm going to uh, 
cast a spell so I can take up the vortex token. So I do my my nightmare. So I remove this and it says draw one event. For each event on the event board, assign an Umbra to a mage. So we'll, first of all, we'll see because this one might get discarded. Okay, if it's in the same spot as this one, it moves forward, but it can also be instant, which means it's instant discard, and then I get nothing. Crown of Thorns. The mage that owns the crown uh, gains one point. The uh, Black Rose War, the Black Rose inflicts two damage to the mage that owns the crown. So it is instant. So basically, I get one point, but I also get two damage. And this is kind of unfair because I always have the crown. None of the avatars can ever have the crown. The crown is a first player marker. So anyway, I get two damage. Or I receive two damage, but I also get one point. There you go, immediately on the scoreboard. So with the selling, there's only one. So I assign one Umbra. to a mage anywhere. And then I gain one point for each Umbra in the Lodge, so I'll get another point. So I have two points to start off with. And I'm going to, I can't attach it to him because he's safe in his room. I could attach it to him, even though it doesn't fit. <laughs> but I'm not gonna attach it to uh, him, I'm gonna attach it to Jukas because I don't trust him with all his vortex stuff and summoning stuff and everything, uh, you know, like getting all the cubes in each room where there's a vortex, so. But because of the spell, I pick this up so I get this, um, and then this one is done. My turn is over. So then we look at the possessed. So they flip their first card, and it says instantly. Um, wait, it's him. So he's not going to do anything. He's going to. He's just going to go out of his room. So that's his first action. Just leaving, and leaving, he has to follow the uh, movement as well. So it says here, target of rooms, the room with the most mages inside. So there's a three-way tie. The room with the most models inside, uh, which is this one. So he's going to go towards Jukas. And his movement is two. So this is going to be one and two. And that's it. So sometimes uh, a card might have a plus. Actually, this card has it. It has a plus. But we just discard the card because it was in their room. So it doesn't really matter what's on it, but normally you would put a second card on top of it, but that doesn't add to the three card activation. Okay, just basically they do three turns. Okay, then it's Jukas' turn. Now I still have to shuffle his cards because I just put everything out because this game is quite heavy on the setup, especially with uh, Hastur over there because he has to come from a different box. Like you can put all the cards in the main box almost, I think of the of the you know like the activation cards and everything but then the miniatures you cannot so it's kind of a pain okay so he says teleportation places one in a room um so first of all teleportation and teleportation means that he is gonna go somewhere and then he's going to place that so he is placed in the target room priority one or two so it's priority one so then we're going to see here priority one jukas chooses a target the room with the most uh models in it but that's his own room so it's not going to be uh he doesn't count himself the room with no uh vortex in it but there's many of them that are tied well actually no she's going to come to me because i'm the only room with no vortex in it so he's going to teleport together with his Umbra to here. All right. So then it says place one in the room. So he's going to place another vortex here, which is actually good for me. I can do another spell and then pick up my second one. And then his second action is he focuses, he refocuses because it has a diamond with a number two. So we'll look at number two. Jukas chooses a target. The room with the most cubes not placed by the Black Rose. Oh, I forgot. I forgot to place my cube because I have a thing here. So that goes here. And then he didn't activate anything. And his card does not have a cube on it either. So anyway, number two, the room with the most cubes not placed by the black rose. So of course it's where he is. So he stays there. So he does his special ability immediately and then summons an arcane Negrito. 
his special ability. Oh my goodness, already the first turn. So he places one vortex, but he doesn't because there's already one. Then he places one cube in each room where there's a vortex. Oh my goodness, look at this, this is going to green everywhere. I initially thought about making Jukas the avatar, but then he gets all the extra black rose war black rose points as well, which I don't want. And you can see I have a tendency to call the black rose the black rose wars, but yeah, it's not true, of course, it's not correct. So boom, 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 that's all done. And then each room with all its instabilities revealed, but that doesn't happen, that's fine. So then uh, last part of his card is summon an arcane negrito. So his arcane negrito is here. And that says, when the Arcane Negrito performs a melee action, it has plus one for each vortex owned by the target. So if he would hit me, he would hit me for four. All right, so I'm gonna put him on the side. It's out of out of the out of the, the image. I'm sorry about that, but the game is big and limited table space, sadly. But the models are pretty cool. So I'll put, this one underneath. So there's a lot of people in my room, which means it's probably gonna attract even more people. So that's his turn finally done. That was very annoying. So then we have Hastur, uh, which also has to be shuffled. Let's see. Well, at least I have two points already, but I did get and I didn't get hit exactly, I can still run away. All right, Hastur's first card is... moves towards a room. So then I have to take his uh, overview, and it says, moves towards a room, it's number one, the room with the most mages. Well, of course he's gonna come here, but his movement is only one. So it's gonna be this one then, uh, because this is the only one that he can reach. So he joins the possessed, boom. Um, and then it says, place three instability cubes. Wow, okay. So he's the black rose, so boom, 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 boom. And then trauma three on each mage, one from the target, so basically, Trauma three on everybody. So I give up three of my tokens to him. Uh, we will put it here. And then Jukas puts three. And then the possessed also puts three. We're all traumatized by Hastur because he's too near us. Uh, and then draws and resolves one quest of the current moon. So when he draws a quest, it's here and they instantly solve it, so they instantly get the points. So basically he gets two points for his Holy Corruption. Now just to show you what this quest is, even though it has no effect, it just gives the Black Rose two points. There we go. It says, after you resolve an effect of one of your spells and you have three uh, symbols of that, and or those, that symbol, on the active side of your revealed spells, then you can do whatever it says, which is pretty sweet. So anyway, that's his solved spell. And actually, what was mine again? I have to resolve a red room. Of course, those rooms were too far, but I can go here and inflict damage on one of them and then put a cube on. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that brings it back to me, right? Yes. Oh, and he has a cube there, so he actually actually puts another cube here. My god. This room is already almost finished. So let's actually try to put a cube there just to just to get just to grab a point. <laughs> um all right, so my options are to summon a cadaver, um, which would activate so I can damage someone. Um I can also inflict three damage, and and I know. He's, they're not protected because they don't have an, uh, an icon. But I can do it from up to two spots away. So I could move and then do damage from here and send Hastur away or the Possessed or whatever. Um, I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to move two spots. So bye guys. One and two. 
and then I will activate the al alchemical laboratory, which will inflict damage, uh, one damage on Hastur, because he is now my opponent. Uh, so he's, his health is down to 12. He's of course not the easiest target because he has the most health, but whatever. He hit me first, so I'm damn well gonna hit him back. Okay, so I did that. I activated a room, and because I activated a red room, I put a cube on. And then I will do vigorous infusion. So I inflict three damage to Hastur. So the uh, 12 minus three is nine. Oh, why did it have so many so much it was supposed to be just one <laughs> I gave him way too much health so this is a three there you go put it on the side so he has nine health left and then uh, it also says I can move him up to two spots so I'm just gonna make him go up boom there we go see ya and then I put a cube of mine in the room. There we go. Okay, I know I'm not taking part in this room and it's probably gonna get filled up, but it is what it is. Uh, I prefer doing damage in this case. So that's me done. Then it's up to the possessed, uh, their first action. He's gonna, first of all, put a cube where he is. So that finishes the room uh, later on. And it's number two. So number two is the avatar chooses among the targetable models. The mage in the nearest room, so of course it's tied. The mage with the most points. Crap. So, <laughs> so it goes to me. Uh, it, no, he doesn't even go to me. He's Because he's just doing a range thing. He's just shooting. So he inflicts two damage and then converts one damage. So basically he shoots me for two. There we go. And then replaces this one with one of his. Has to be a weird feeling if someone changes the damage that was done to you. Um, and then finally he moves towards a, a treasure room, treasury room. So uh, it's gonna be sanctuary because that's the nearest one. Uh, nobody else is in a room, so this is gonna be the closest one. So he just goes here and he's there now. I needed a spell, so he picks this up. That's his. Um, although Hastur did a spell there too, so he initially... Wait, where did he do his spell? There, yeah, so actually it's his. He has the, the vortex, not him. So like I said, three avatars, it's a lot to, to keep track of. Uh, so that's him done, that was his second turn. Second turn for Jukas. He already had an amazing first turn, so let's see if he can follow it up. Okay, restore energy. That doesn't sound good. So it's uh, two. So for Hastur, I need to... Oh, it's here. So for Jukas, sorry. Um, the room with the most cubes not placed by the Black Rose. If tied... Um, it's actually tied. It's a three-way tie. Here, here, and here. Uh, the room with the most cubes, so here, so he's going there. I guess for him, he shouldn't think about the uh, the Black Rose cubes anyway, because he's not the Black Rose. He is the Black Rose, so he should just go to wherever the most cubes are. Anyway, so he's there, and then he places two. Ah, uh, but I guess the room would not be... It doesn't mention if the room is finished or not. It's just the most cubes. So yeah, he places two. And there's nothing to place because it's full already. Anyway, so it also says draw another one. So I guess he does nothing. Wait, does he even go there? He doesn't go there. He doesn't go there. He's just doing it from a distance. He doesn't move. Okay, and then the next one. Oh, again, teleportation. So number one teleportation, which is the room with the most mages. No, it's all ties. The room with no uh, vortex. 
There's no vortex in any of those. If tied, the room with the most cubes. That's me, of course. So he comes to me. Huh. Oh, and uh, by the way, before I continue his turn, I actually forgot to take an Umbra and also to, to tell you guys about what an Umbra does. Where is he? There he is. Umbra, the nightmare. So it says when the Umbra performs a physical attack, it targets the mage it's assigned to, of course. When it performs it, it inflicts one damage to the evocation whose evocation card occupies the same evocation slot as, slot as this card. So he's in number one. So basically, he will attack him, but also attack his evocation, which is also in slot one. So it's pretty cool. I like that. All right. So, but it only does one damage though. So it's one one. Uh, it has two health. All right. So the rest of his action. He places one Vortex token there, of course. There we go. And then number two, two activation, as you can see here. And it says the room with the most, it's, it's, it can only be one room away though, and he's not teleporting this time. The room with the most cubes not placed by him. So basically it's gonna be this, which he can reach because it has a uh, room one. Gains one point for each cube converted. Ah, he converts two and he gains two points for that. Okay. So I just converts the first two. So he gains two points for that. I was so happy I had two points. Everybody's just getting points now. Everyone's just getting points now. Okay. So that's done. Then it is Hastur's turn, who is now pretty far away and he can only move one. <laughs> Okay, so it is an instant spell and he <clears throat> puts a cube where he is. Inflicts one damage to each mage <clears throat> who has a, a token of his assigned. Sorry, <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. But he hasn't assigned any tokens to anyone, so that doesn't happen. Inflicts three damage to each mage who does not have one assigned. And it is simply anywhere. So it doesn't even have to be there. And then he moves towards the room. So first he's gonna do three damage everywhere. So three damage to Jukas. So his health is now down to eight. Three damage to the possessed who is now down to 10, oh, sorry, seven, uh, nine. Three damage to me, am I almost dead or what? Definitely feels like it. Yep, I am almost dead, I'm at seven. Um, and then he moves towards a room and that room is the room with the most mages, which is here, so he moves towards it. Um, and I guess, where he goes? Um, there's always a question like, which one of these is it then? <laughs> so I guess with the most cubes, it says then, so it goes here. All right, so he's in the Black Rose room again. So that goes away, then it's me. Um, so I still have this one left and this one. Um, if I put a totem, I immediately get two cubes, which is okay. I can't move anymore, but I can get my cadaver out. So I'm gonna get my cadaver out. Uh, come on, my dude. This is my second unit. So he's here. This is what he looks like. My cadaver, and then he gets the upgrade, which is. I'm gonna do my choice. Oh, actually, I think I'm gonna give him the muscular implant to do as much damage as possible. So I'll give you a, a quick overview of the you know, the uh, upgrades. You have the muscular implant, which is plus one damage. Then you have the corrosive plasma, which basically means you do damage to the whole room instead of just your target. 
uh, muscular implant, cerebral implant, which means each time this model inflicts damage, its control gains one point. Actually, I think I'm going to use that. I want those points. <laughs> uh, something else is tendon implant. This model has plus one movement, and at the end of the black rose phase, it, you can move it uh, a number of rooms equal to its value, so it's pretty good. Uh, reinforced dermis is for to make it live longer because it has plus two health. Uh, regenerating Icker, when this model is about to suffer damage, it ignores one damage of that damage. I think that's it. Yeah, it seems like it. Yeah. yeah so those are the upgrades. So I'm going to go for uh, the cerebral implant, which means when I do damage, I get a point. Or when he does damage, I do a point. I don't know if it's really visible in the image. I'll put it like this. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, where's where's my where's my cadaver? Oh here. Yeah. So I do less damage, but I get a point every time I do a damage. And he has plus one health because of this. So he has three health. And yeah. So I give the upgrade. It activates. So it attacks Jukus and it hits it for two. But I get a point. So I'm back in the lead, and Jukus is down two more. So, he just has six health left. And then it's my turn again. I know it's still my turn, technically. Um, I did this action, so I put a cube out as well. So I have another cube here. And then I will do, I will, uh, do the totem thing as well, I think. And that will be my last action. Yeah, might as well. So I summon a totem and I place two cubes. And then that action doesn't give me any cubes, no. So I summon a totem. I think the totems are in here as well. Let's see, yeah, totem. So what a totem does, specifically, it has three health. When the totem activates, its controller can heal one or convert one damage uh, on somebody else from it. So actually, it's pretty good. I didn't even realize that it did that. So it's actually going to heal me. So the totem comes out. There's my number three. And I'm curious if the nightmare, I think the nightmare takes up a slot, but I just want to make so, double. so this doesn't actually take up a slot, actually. It just goes together with it, even though it's not really together together. So I'm supposed to change these. This guy is supposed to be one. So when I was thinking about having too many summons, that actually was not an issue. Okay, so that's changed. So my turn is over. I've done everything I needed to, and now I just need to hope that I uh, survive the round because there's only three left. I don't want to die. Okay, so possessed. Possessed were actually protected this whole turn, but they were not attacked, so it's fine. Oh, wait, Jukas was protected. Ooh, I didn't know. Oh, this probably is bad for me. Ooh, oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Because my guy hit him for two damage. Let's see what happened. But he was protected when Huster hit him. Huster hit all of us three times. That was his plus one, right? Uh, plus one. Yeah. So he's protected when Huster attacked him. So wait, wait. So let's see what happens to Huster then. Because the protection was place one cube in a room for each damage suffered. So. Basically, he would have put, that means this one's actually full. He would have put three in here. So my cube goes away. But that means the two cubes that I place, it could go up to two rooms away, so I can put one cube here. That's fine. Uh, he was one damage on himself for each uh, cube not placed this way. But yeah, there were spaces there because he was there before I. 
was, so it's fine. And then the same applies to him actually. When he did damage, he was able to react. So it says here, he ignored the damage. So he never got damaged at all. So he stood at 12. Place one cube in a room for each ignored. Okay, so it's really good for him because that means he just put three in the sanctuary. Nice. Nice for both of them. <laughs> okay, so it's the possessed turn now, the last turn of everyone. He moves towards a red room. So a red room, his arena is only over there. I think there's a close, oh no, here, I can't, oh, it just goes in here. Okay. Do, 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 do. He joins the fray. Hi guys. Activates target room without generating any effect. If it does, draws and solve one quest of the current moon. So yeah, basically he gets a quest and he gets the points. So the points that he's getting is one point. And it was Guardian Mage. After you resolve the effect of one of your uh, protection spells, draw one spell from the library and then place one cube. So he gets, he solves one quest. So he gets one point, his first point. Congratulations, dude. All right, so that is all that he does. And then Jukas is there. Oh, and by the way, I get the vortex because I did a spell there. All right, so power of the mind. He places himself in the uh, Black Rose room. Okay. I guess he teleports again. And then activates the target room without generating any effect. Oh, by the way, he puts a cube there. Uh, I guess he puts a cube. No, he puts a cube there. Yeah, because the second one. If he does, draws and solves one quest of the current moon. Oh no, he's going to activate a special again. All right, so he gets two points. Jukas gets two points. So he takes control. And I think he's going to get a lot more than that. And then he uh, does his special effect again. So his special effect is place one vortex. There's already one that doesn't happen. And then place a cube everywhere where there's vortexes. Oh my goodness. So, hop, hop. Like this man and his vortexes, it's very annoying. And it says any room that's full is flipped over. So that'll be this room. Uh, so we all go here. So we tie. So both me and Jukas get three points. So Jukas hits seven and I hit six. So we've reached this point. So the changes happen immediately. So I get one of my uh, original cards in my hand. So I have two of these now. And then for all the guys, all these, I'm just going to flip it over. Well, actually, no, I just removed the whole deck uh, because the half moons go away. And the, sorry, the, the one third moon, I guess, whatever. And the half moons come out. So for the possessed. So luckily it's not in the middle of an actual turn. And with that, I mean, the, like if it's not like someone's second turn or something, because then it can get confusing at how many activations have happened already. Um, they were built immediately, and I think that's the end of uh, Jukas's turn anyway, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. And by the way, we flipped over. Oh, we haven't flipped over yet. So let's do that first. Yeah, I know it's a bit messy. So everybody gets the cubes back, which is good news for Jukas because he only had three left. And then we flip over the alchemical al laboratory. I've never flipped that over before, so I have no idea what he's going to do. Here we go. The alchemical laboratory. Draw three spells from your grimoire, discard one to your memories. That's good because you can combine it with the Black Rose room. Get more spells, then go there and get a forgotten spell. It's really nice. 
bad news for me is with the new deck, uh, the possessed is protected. You can see here. So uh, I'm probably not going to attack him. But I think it's protected against a spell, not against melee. But I have to double check that later. So that's done. Jukas' cards also go away. And he did place a cube. I think he already did that. So that's fine. But these cards also go away. His second ones come out. And there's a bunch more that, that has to be replaced. Uh, so this is half moons. These cards go away. They're replaced by half moons. Shuffle, 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 shuffle a little bit. There we go. These cards go away, the quests. Half moons come out. And then his deck goes away. And he can immediately use uh, one of his new spells, of course. One of his new activations. Because while Jukas has his has ended, all three activations possessed, all three activations has ended, but for uh, Hastush, he still has one turn, which will happen right now, because I think everything else has changed. So, boom. Moves towards a room. All right, so he goes towards a room. The room with the most mages, of course, is here. So he moves towards it. So um, if there's a tie, most models, and the most cubes, so it's going to go down. Oh, wait, the crypt is also finished. You have to flip that too. Sorry. So there, four points go to Jukas. So he's already at 11 points. My goodness. Two points go to the Black Rose. And it's at four. And then one point goes to the Possessed. And Jukas is running away. He's like, bye. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. Okay, so up and there and then we flip over the crypt and then the power of the crypt is summon a cadaver summon a cadaver now what's special about these powers by the way is you can only use them once because then it's crossed out okay and then, then of course the next round it's filled back but that's really good uh, honestly okay so anyway uh remember with Hastur um he was, he's going to go towards here, but the problem is to always know which way is he going to go. Um, he's going to go left or right. Nice like towards the room. Yeah, I think it comes down to the crown uh, chooses because it says, let's say he only has a reach of one, right? Because he can only move one space. I can move three spaces, actually. Hustler is pretty fast. You can only play, move one space. Ah, Jukas. Oh. Okay, I've made a mistake earlier then, but I only made it move once. Okay, so we can just come here. Okay, never mind. Wait, okay, so he moves three. Uh, he arrives there. And then he is going to... He can't put a cube down, so that doesn't happen. It says trauma on each mage within range one. So basically, he's just going to do trauma on me and the possessed. And the possessed is only protected against um, an, 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 an immediate spell, not like a general spell. So it's three here and three there. And then assigns a token to each, each mage from the target. So we all get a token. So I get a token and the possessed gets a token. Draws and resolves one quest of the current moon. Wow. So they get two points. Powerful moon. Uh, two points for the black rose, right? Yeah. Six. Okay. And it was suffocated scream. Okay, then. <laughs> okay, so that's everybody done. And then it's time for the cleanup phase. No, no, not the cleanup phase. Now it's time for the evocation phase. So first of all, all the evocations of the Black Rose activate, but that's Hastur, and Hastur has zero ones, so that's fine. So then in play order, each evocation activates one at a time in the order their owner prefer. So it's me first. Um, 
So I know this guy is going to activate and he's going to move twice and uh, he might come to my direction. So I think I'm going to activate my totem first, which means I heal one. There we go. Hopefully that'll keep me alive. And then we'll see what the uh, arcane Negrero does. Um, can the evocation attack a mage by moving or by staying where it is? It has it can it can attack any mage. So yes, the target is the closest mage with the most health. Oh okay. So basically, it's gonna move here and it's gonna attack the possessed. And then the attack is two damage plus one for each vortex token. They don't have a vortex token, so it's just two damage to the possessed. Um, so up. So now they are down to 10. There we go. That is back down to me. And I activate my Umbra, which basically does one damage to uh, this guy here. But he still has three health left. So one damage to the Arcane Negredo, and then also one damage to Jukas. Now, if Jukas had been. Um, from the Black Rose, it would have ignored the damage because it's actually all the Nightmares are owned by the Black Rose. So you can't use a Nightmare to damage the Black Rose. So uh, he's down to five health now. And um, then it's gonna be my Cadaver who activates. He can actually move twice. So I'm just gonna keep pounding on uh, him over there yeah so one two and he hits jukas for another two so he's down to three and uh i get a point for that okay so sadly i didn't kill him though so that's all the evocations done yep and then we do have the final cleanup phase finally i mean Okay, so I have no spells to return because I didn't have any traps or protection spells. So all these go in a discard. I mean, in my memories. There we go. Um, in play order, each mage performs their effects that trigger the cleanup phase. I don't have any effects that trigger. Um, no rooms have to be re rebuilt because thanks to Jukas, they're already all rebuilt. And then all room activation tokens flip back, but they haven't been activated yet, so it doesn't matter. And if any power tokens have reached or passed the Black Rose Cube, the game ends immediately, but we're nowhere near that yet. Well, we are, well, we're like a third a third gone. Okay, so then we restart again. First of all, we check um, one space to the right, the event, and then we draw a new event. And it says, illness. The Black Rose converts one health on each mage with at least one damage, converts one damage on each mage with at least one damage from the Black Rose on their mage sheets. And that goes to the final spot here. So uh, basically, this one becomes Black Rose. One of my damages becomes Black Rose. How dare you! And one of my damages here becomes Black Rose. Yes, they can damage themselves, but I don't think they get points for that. <laughs> I know it, it's perfectly possible to damage yourself, but uh, I mean, you, yeah, you don't get points for that. All right, so then that's done. Starting from the leftmost card, apply the effects. Well, I did the effect with the second one already, but if the avatar is in one of those rooms, He's in a red room, which is not mentioned, so nothing happens. Okay. And then I can discard one of my quest cards, but then the uh, Black Rose gains points, which I'm which in the second moon already. They would get two points if I decide to change my quest, which is ridiculous. I'm not going to give them any points. Oh, by the way, cleanup phase. Cleanup phase for Jukas. I almost forgot. Um, cleanup phase for Jukas. Uh, mages discard all the vortex tokens, and if you have two or more, you draw a forgotten spell. 
So uh, obviously my two go away, this one goes away. And then I can draw a forgotten spell. Ooh, I'm really excited about this, the shuffle first though. All right, give me a goodie. Give me a goodie, give me a goodie, give me a goodie. Forgotten spells there. Boom. Killer frog, killer fog. I thought it was killer frog. <laughs> Killer Fog, it affects all the mages. Inflict four damage, convert two damage to each other mage. Oh my god, it's awesome. That means I can kill him. And I can remove all, no, not all, almost. On the other version, inflict two damage, convert four damage to each other ma mage. Wow. Then I can kill him. Wow, this is so awesome. If I combine this with assembly line, I can kill him and I have all the points for myself should be five points, which is what I need to get to him, actually. That's so awesome. Cool. Anyway, um, I forgot about that. So let's continue. Um, blah, blah, blah. The, uh, everything else doesn't matter in the Black Rose phase. Then the study phase. Each mage draws two from the grimoire. So just as a, just to remind everyone, I have the Killer Fog, not Frog. Assembly line, which I already had. Remember now though, I can remove one of my undead with an assigned upgrade. For example, I can remove the Cadaver and replace it with a Colossus and add the same upgrade or a different one to the Colossus, which means more damage. Living Liquid, assign the re Regenerating Icker upgrade to the target if you do heal two to yourself, which is pretty nice at the moment because I need to heal. Or discard an upgrade assigned to the target if you do place three cubes in a room where the target is. So I can remove a, an upgrade and put three here instantly, for example. Okay, so those are the three that I have. The two that I'm going to draw are Acid Blood. Assign the Corrosive Plasma upgrade to the target if you do inflict one damage uh, in the room from the target. So basically, the, once again, the Acid Blood changes your attack to a person to the whole room. So if I change him, uh, basically I want to be out of the room and then just have that um, evocation there and then it'll damage the whole room. Or I can just do inflict three damage, place one cube, which is also nice. Kinetic infusion, move three times and then you may activate a room, which is okay. Uh, kinetic infusion, assign the tendon implants, you know that lets them move more. Upgrade to the target if you do place one cube in that room. I'm not a really big fan of kinetic infusion, honestly, but it is what it is. So then I can once again draw four cards of the different uh, spells. Okay, we haven't drawn yet from Agony. So just to show you, this is Agony. Cross and Delight. Summon a succubus, pain one, it activates. Succubi are cool. I'll tell you why in a second. Target one of your demons, inflict two damage in a room from the target, plus one damage for each damage on the target demon card. Remove the target. Okay. Um, I'll show you Succubi. I'll show you an example of a succubus. There you go. They are cool because their power is has plus one damage for each damage on this card. Each time the succubus owner suffered damage, the succubus can suffer one damage of those damage in their place. So she has three health, but if you add the plus two health, she can have five health. And for every damage she has, she does more damage, more, 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 more. So it's pretty cool, I feel. Anyway, so that's that one. Uh, I'll take one from Technomancy. That's my second. That's supposed to be my school. Draco skin. One of your evocations is defeated or removed, so it's a trap. Summon the defeated or removed model, assign the reinforced dermis upgrade to it. So basically it just immediately pops back. Or a model enters the room that you are in. Target that model, inflict three damage, you may move the target up to one. Oh, I love this one. Uh, you enter my room, bye, boom. So Draco skin, uh, so I have two more. I'm getting another shamanic because I have a totem. Might as well try to use it. Uh, wind spirit. 
Look at three spells from the library. Draw one of those cards. Discard the others to the corresponding discard part of the library. Okay. And then Wind Spirit, shuffle your memories into your grimoire. Search for up to two spells in your grimoire, reveal those and draw them. And shuffle your grimoire. Okay. I'll probably remove that. And then another shamanic rain totem. Activate a room up to two spots away from the target totem. Activate a room up to two spots away from the target totem. Remove the target totem. So basically, I activate two rooms and then remove it. It's pretty good. Summon a totem, place a number of cubes in a room from it, equal to the number of altars in the lodge. So what I understand is, once you have a totem, it's basically seen as an altar. Because otherwise, altars make no sense, because it's not mentioned anywhere. And it just always says, once you place a totem, check how many altars. It's basically like, once you put an umbra, check how many nightmares. I think it's similar to that. If I'm wrong, please do let me know. But uh, we now have four cards to choose from. Um, I like Draco's skin because of the trap, so I'm definitely keeping that one. Um, I like the fact that I can activate two rooms because now there's some really nice rooms out. Um, I don't like Wind Spirit, so Wind Spirit can go. So it's either the Succubus or the Rain Totem. Um, it's basically summoning another totem. Uh, I'm going to keep the totem card. I'm going to not take the Succubus. Okay, so now I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards, which is still enough. Cool part is, that I can actually go here, discard three and get another forgotten spell. But we'll see. All right, so I've gotten what I need. Um, and then I can actually get, can get rid of one card forever. And there was one card that I didn't like, right? Kinetic Infusion. Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of that forever. So I'm down to six cards, okay. Okay, so then um, we have the Preparation phase where I place my spells. So obviously I want to get rid of Jukas before it's his turn or before anybody can steal my kill. So uh, that would be the Killer Fog, inflict two, and then convert four to each other. Huh. It says inflict two damage to any mage and then convert four damage to each other mage. So I basically like inflict two damage to, um, let's say, who is not protected, Hastur. And then I can convert four damage to everywhere else. Which is still nice, but it means I'm not doing any damage to Yukus. So then my next target has to be three damage to Yukus. So let's say if I put this here. Do I have anything that allows me to do three damage to, to Yukus immediately? Yes, Acid Blood. Okay, I'll put Acid Blood here and then Killer Fog there. And if I do those together, Yukus is dead. And this guy, by the way, will stay. Okay, even if Yukus is dead, the evocations, they stay alive. So then what else am I going to do? Um, I'm going to use assembly line and I'm going to replace my cadaver with a big guy. And um, then, but I want to do Draco's skin as well. I'll do assembly line at the end and I'll do Draco's skin second. I just have to hope my cadaver survives until then. It's tricky, but yeah. And my totem, I guess I'll keep him from now. I have two cards in my hand. Uh, yeah. Yes, I think I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to stick with that. Yeah. Okay, cool. So starting from the leftmost card, apply the events of each event, but nothing happens there. And then we do our, our activations. So. Um, my turn, eh? Oh, this is, of course, flipped over again. Um, so I'll do what I, do, uh, what I was going to say. So uh, put the stuff on first. So I'll take this off, inflict two damage 
to the possessed. Um, but wait. Yeah, this is the only option. Two damage to the possessed, so they are now at eight. And then I convert four damage everywhere else. So it goes away. And then these four. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 I can't do that. Okay, wait, I'm not doing that. Because if I do that, I don't have enough cubes. I don't have enough cubes to, to kill him. Because of the trauma. The trauma messed me up. I'm so traumatized. Um, all right, so. Oh, man. I could just outright kill him without doing that. Um, because all I need to do is inflict three and place one cube, and it's fine. Okay. Um, oh, that's annoying. Because it's going to be... Or I'm going to have to hope that nobody kills Jukas. Okay, I need to do the, the Huster action. By the way, at the end of the round, cleanup phase, does anything happen? Um, yeah, it does, sorry. So during cleanup phase with Haster, it says Haster obtains one victory of each mage with a token assigned. So place these on Haster's avatar card. Okay. So basically, uh, you'll get a trophy, not a victory, but a trophy token of both me and the possessed because of his subdue. Because we still have his token. But now I'm going to use this token. I'm going to use this token to do introspection, which basically means a physical action um, where I do four things. So I flip this over. It says here introspection, and I do these four things. So I meant six. So basically that means I get back six tokens, which is the exact amount that he stole from me, that he traumatized me for. Move up to one. So I'm going to move. I'm going to move to the cemetery. And then place two in a room. So I'll place two there. Which I can still afford, I think. And then discard one token. So I give the token back to him. All right. So that was one action. And then for my second action, um, I can still do this, the killer fog. I think that's still fine. I'll do two damage to the possessed still, uh, to I'll do two damage to Hastur, actually. It makes more sense. Two damage to Hastur, because I can target anyone and then convert four everywhere else. So these two will be converted to mine. And those four will be also converted to mine. Uh, so these four go here. And then I have to put one in the room where I am. That's okay. And now I have three left, which is just enough to kill him with my next one. Okay. So that was my first first turn. Mm, I also hope nobody kills me, of course, but we'll see. Okay. So actually, sorry, he was a, a target of a spell, right? So he's actually protected. So what happens is, targets the mage which cast that spell, ignores the spell effect and inflicts two damage. Great. So these two green ones stay green. But it's two damage to me. Ouch, 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 ouch. The rest is not protected. Okay, so now the possessed first turn. He puts a cube there, there's no cube there. Inflicts one damage to each mage everywhere. Explosion of thorns, wow. Ouch. So one damage to me, and I'm just about as good as dead. This is four, six, seven. So we're supposed to be at six now. 
That's two. And then one here. This is two, four, six, eight, nine. So he's down to two. That was his only action. Then it's uh, Jukas. Wither. So he's going to teleport. He's going to jump around. So Wither. When Jukas has to... I'm oh, sorry. Uh, first one. He chooses a target. The room with the most people so is going to be here. He's going to jump there then. Um, okay. So he jumps with his nightmare to here. Boom. Hi, guys. Um, and then he says he targets number three. And number three is the mage who has the most uh, vortexes on their mage card. It's tied. The mage who has the most points. That's obviously Jukas himself, so it's not possible, um, of the room where he is in. I know up to two away, so actually it's me. Oh, he's going to target me. The target discards one vortex. I don't have it. If they do, each one of them loses a point. I don't have it. So inflicts two damage plus one damage for each model from the target. Huh. Um, inflicts two damage plus one for each one from the target. So it's going to be four then because there's so many around. It's definitely going to add up to four. So basically, it hits me for four, six. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah. So basically, I'm dead. And he, he just does one damage to me, though, because um, overkill doesn't matter. So the one who killed me the most and the most damage was the possessed. So they're going to get four points. If they're the only one, you get five. They get four, so they're up to six. Then is the Black Rose. And I think they get, is it two? It could be three. Um, two. Two damage. Uh, two points, sorry. There are eight. And then one point for him, which is a 12. And because he did the final blow, he gets my trophy, which is also annoying. So that's for him. Okay. Um, yeah, and then this all goes away. So they get the cubes back. There we go. So, hop. Probably on the first person to die. So embarrassing. Um, all right, so my character goes back here. And then um, I didn't have any active traps, so that would have helped, but it's not active, so it doesn't matter. Um, OK, so right now I'm, I'm immune to their actions, so at least that's good. OK, so he killed me. Good on you. Yeah. So now it is Hastur's turn. Oh yeah, by the way, this card was still there. Normally at the end of the round, you uh, shuffle this, whatever was here, and you put it on the bottom. This didn't happen the first round because we had, we went over to the next moon phase immediately. So, moves towards the Black Rose room. So he has a move of three, so he just easily gets there. And then, trauma five on each mage and each one who doesn't have uh, one of his tokens loses one point and then another card okay so luckily i am super protected from all of that <laughs> um they don't have any protections so they lose five tokens uh due to trauma so i like how hastur's trauma is kind of like a counter to uh, yuka's his uh, vortex shenanigans because suddenly Yukas only has two left. Oh wait, he has a token. Um, so he doesn't lose a point, but Yukas doesn't have a token, so he loses a point. And then an extra card. 
this extra card is places two cubes on each room around him. So this one and around. So two everywhere. Wow, how stood. So two in the cemetery. Two in the armory. Two in the garden. And it's called Spring of Silica. Two in the arena. Two in the throne room. And two in the Black Rose room. Okay. Um, each mage and the distance of two, so here, who does not have a token assigned removes two of their uh, cubes from a room of their choice. So basically, Yukas has to remove two of his choice. Um, so two of his choice. So let's take a look at his preference of rooms for Yukas. Um, I guess it was going to be the room, the room with the most not placed by uh, him. That's where he removes two of them. It doesn't really make sense though. I think I'll just remove two wherever he has the most. So, well, does that make sense though? Because Huster says remove two of their choice, right? Yeah, of their choice. So if you look at this, it would say not placed by the Black Rose. And if that, the room with the most cubes. Let's just do that. So let's take away two of here. There we go. That's finally his turn is over. That's my turn. Of course, I have to get out again. So I am going to move out. And I need to um, get close to Yuka. So I need to get close to here. So I have to be in the crypt or the sanctuary. So in the crypt, I cannot. I cannot do the full action. Because I can only summon one ca cadaver. Which is fine in itself, honestly. Um, yeah, I'll just do that. Well, drawing a quest is pretty nice. Drawing a quest is pretty nice too. Yeah, I'll draw a quest. Could be more points. Although, cadaver is more damage. Not one, two. Cadaver. Okay, I'll do the action. Summon a cadaver. Um, so. Of course, this cadaver does not have any upgrades. It's just a regular two damage, two health guy. There we go. And get him out. So like I said, I can't summon the other one. And then as my second one, I activate this one. So I do this spell, which means inflict three in a room here. So it's actually not even a person. I do three acid damage in that room. The downside is I do damage to the room. So that means I destroy my totem. <laughs> That's, uh, well, is this going to have to be like that? You know, <laughs> I'm just going to have to, we're just going to have to do it like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, too bad. So three damage to the whole room and uh, nobody has protection off. So three damage to Yukas, which kills him. I only need two for that. Sadly, of course, the possessed came in and messed around. So he dies. He goes back to his room. Oop. The Umbra is gone. So the nightmare is gone. Oop. And I did the most damage, so I get plus four, so I'm at 11. And then the possessed get uh, the second most damage, so they get two points. Oh, such a leech. There we go, they also have eight. 
Um, I get all my cubes back, which is pretty important. Because then I also do three damage to the possessed. So it's now minus five, so they're at seven. And uh, Yukas is back to 11, of course. But it's also cool that uh, because of what I did, I also get his trophy, because of what I did, I actually slowed down his progress because his next activation is just going to be getting out of his room, which is pretty sweet. Okay, so also three damage to his evocation. He already had one damage, so his evocation is also out of the game. Boom, destroyed the arcane uh, negredo. There we go. And um, and also my my own uh, my totem is destroyed because it has a health of three. That's too bad. So it's really difficult to get this totem out. Oh. Wow. Okay. So here for now. Okay. So that was my spell. And I also get to place one cube um, anywhere. So I'll put it here so the room finishes. So at least I get points. And the Black Rose gets points too, but it's okay because they're behind me. That's fine. That's acceptable. So he was sent back. His health is back up to scratch. He has seven health. He, he has seven health. He has six health. Um, that was my turn. I'm done. Um, and now it's the possessed. Yeah. Moves towards the Black Rose room. They move two steps, right? So they can get there easily. Boom. If the target room is the Black Rose, place two cubes. Okay. If the target room is a Black Rose, convert one cube. So I always do the first one. So there we go. Um, and then take another card. Wow. They're really going for it, huh? Moves towards a purple room. So there's two of them are equal. So I have to see which one that they prefer uh, for a room. It says the room with the most mages inside, there's no one inside. With the most malls inside, they're both empty. The room with the most cubes placed on it, if tied. Yeah, okay, no mind. The cube, most cubes is here, so that's where he goes. Activates the room without generating an effect. If it does, draws and solves one quest of the current moon. Okay, wow, they had a really, really nice turn. Because that gives them another three points. Enigmatic Sun. Hello. Three points. And suddenly they're right up there with us. 11. We're all at 11. I think it's Stranger Things. Okay. So then it's time for Hastor. See if he can do... No, no. Time for Jugas to get out. So up. And um, then let's see where he goes. Let's say, Jukas, uh, Jukas. Because he moves out, but he has to move towards somewhere. Jukas chooses the target, the room with the most people, um, the most mages, but we're all separated. The room with no, um, since they're all tied, but no, so he's going to try to get here. And he can move how many steps? One. Okay. Let's say it's here. Okay, so that's his turn. Then it is Hastur. Moves towards a mage. So number three. Let's see where that is. Number three. The mage with the fewest tokens. Um, so that would be me or Hastur, so it's uh, me or Juga, so it's tied. The mage with the most points is also tied. The mage with the most health, so that would be Jukas. Okay, 
So he moves towards him. He moves three times. So he's standing right next to him. Which is nice for a change that, that you know at a different location. That it's not just here. Um, okay. Then he activates. Puts a cube. Or a spell. Um, and it's not, not a spell that he uh, protects himself against. It says three. Again, three. So it's the same thing, isn't it? Oh, wait, it was moves toward the mage. The mage with the fewest. Yeah, okay. It's still the same guy. <laughs> then he does his special action. And his special action says uh, assign one token to each mage where he is. So he puts a token on uh, Jukas. And then it says trauma three on each mage. I cannot read it. Oh, so basically do three trauma three on Yukus. Yukus is being really traumatized at the moment. <sighs> okay. Um, and that's it for the special action. Yeah. Then it says trauma four on each mage from the target, but there's no one around, so it's fine. And another card. Oh my goodness. Okay, another cube there. Just keeps doing spells. Gains one point for each mage who has a token assigned. So that's he gets two points. So he's at 10. Trauma four on each mage who does not have one assigned. So that's me. So I get trauma four. And then he moves towards a room. So first of all, I get trauma four. Six. Um, okay, and then he moves towards your room, number one. The room with the most mages is tied with the most models, this one. And he can move three, so he just instantly goes there. One, two, three. Hi, guys. How you doing? Oh, yeah, my turn. I activate my trap. So from now on, Whichever model comes in gets damaged. And that is the only thing I can do because I already moved, used my movements stuff. So nothing else I can do. It means next time my assembly line is also the only thing that I can do. All right, so we move on to the possessed. And um, I think it is their final turn. I do believe so. That's three activations, right? Well, I can just check it myself because I did movement and killer fog, then acid blood and movement, and now Draco skin, so it's three. So yes, everyone's last turn. Okay. Uh, Sap of the Black Rose. Wow. Heals up to two health, gains one point for each health it did not heal due to this effect. Well, it does heal. So we'll just do one of each to decide how he heals. I guess normally it would be the right side, but because of how I'm doing it, well, no, I'll be honest, I was the one who hurt him last, so. But it's good to pay attention to that, actually. It doesn't, doesn't gain any points, though, because he healed twice. So that's it, that's the end of his round. Jukus, is he gonna be able to do a strong turn? Number one, teleportation. So, number one. The room with the most mages. So he's gonna zoom. He's here again. So they were gone for a little bit. Actually, it's supposed to flip over because I used it. They've gone. They were here for a little bit, but now they're back here again. Um, okay. So he's there. Places one vortex there. Here we go. Oh, by the way, he was here. He did a spell, so he takes this away. I'm not sure if that happened in the Black Rose room, well, whatever. Okay, and then he puts a cube, but there's no cube there. Inflicts one damage on each mage for each solved quest that mage owns. So I don't own anything. He is with Hastur, who has two uh, solved quests. So he does two damage to him, and then he runs out of cubes. 
So he's going to uh, do the other action that I talked about before. And then draws and solves one quest of the first moon. Of the current moon. Ah, one first of the first moon. Not the current moon. Ah, okay. It's a time rift. So he goes basically back in time. Okay. So I'll draw one from the first moon. And he gets one point. There we go. Now I'm curious. Did I make a mistake with, was it Hastur who had a solved quest at one point? No. Oh, he had it. Was it also the first moon or just the current moon? Current moon. Okay, that's fine. All right, so that's uh, Juka's done. He does have a shield up now, so nobody can damage him. All right, Hastur, your final turn. Moves towards a room. Um, so let's see. It's number one. The room with the most mages, he's already there. So it's fine, he stays there. He puts a cube, there's no cube. Trauma three on each mage, basically trauma three on everyone. Great. Look at all the cubes he's, he's collecting. Oh my God, that's crazy. Assign a token to each one who doesn't have one yet. So I have one. Now I wonder, there's only one token, right? Yeah, you can only have one yellow token. Okay, and then each mage who does not have a token uh, assigned loses one point, but everyone has a token. So that's okay, this goes away. Yeah. Okay, my turn then. Um, he did. Did he arrive while my trap was open? He teleported, right? Yeah. So my tra trap actually sprung on him when he used his action. And his protection was not active yet because we're doing the current, it was his turn. So I do three damage to him, basically. So that's eight. Uh, which is kind of annoying because I only have two cubes left now. Um, so I'll do this action, which means I remove my first cadaver. He goes back and I replace him with a Colossus. He's a big guy. And the Colossus gets the same upgrade. So Colossus looks like this. The Colossus inflicts three damage to each mage that enters the room it is in. And then also, thanks to this, it says each time the model inflicts damage, its control gains one point. So I just want him near me. So every time people come in, they get damage and I get points. So it's this big guy here that will replace my number one, who is sadly over here. So he's a bit far away. But yeah, it is what it is. Um, okay, that's it. That was my turn. Everyone's turn is done. So then we have the uh, evocation phase. So first the black rose, but this guy doesn't have any evocation, so nothing happens. Uh, then it's first my evocation that activates and then other people. So there are now other, it's basically just me, there's nobody else. So with him, it's three damage, with him it's two. So I can do five damage to someone, which means sadly I can't kill someone, but I can almost kill them and then kill them next round. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, by the way, um, yeah, never mind. Uh, this one is gonna move forward to here, to the crypt, obviously. And then both of them are gonna damage Hastur but it's impossible because I only have two damage tokens. So sad. So he's going to damage him. He just sticks around, I guess. So two damage to Hastur. So he's down to four. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. He's down to one, actually, apparently. 
Yeah, uh, two. Two, two, two. Three, two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Yeah, it's down to two. Okay, so because I damaged, I get one point. All right, so that's the evocation phase. Disappointing because of my lack of cubes, but it is what it is. Um, also, the, uh, the the action that you can do for Hastur, it is a physical action. So I wouldn't even been able to do it, even if I did think of it in my last turn or whatever. Okay, so clean up. First of all, um, he's going to get victory tokens of everybody who has this token. So everybody has this token. So we all give to Hastur. Oh, it has a ton of tokens. Um, all the vortexes go back. Um, this vortex goes away, by the way, because I did my spell there. Actually, I had it, but I don't have enough for a forgotten spell, so it doesn't matter. Um, and then uh, return. Everything goes to my memories. Except maybe the killer fog. I think once you use it, it's gone. Uh, I have to double check forgotten spells. Nope, they don't go back. You just keep them. I don't think there's anything mentioned on the card either. It just says you get them by the Black Rose Room or somewhere else. Um, oh, no, 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 no. If the forgotten spell would be placed anywhere other than a mage's hand, mage sheet, or a forgotten spell. Oh, okay, but it's my mage sheet. Yeah, so it's fine. No, I can keep it. Cool. So it's in my uh, memories. Okay, so that's done. Then, um, are there any rooms that need to be rebuilt? There are. And the crypt flips back up. This one needs to be rebuilt, and I have the most, which means I get four points, which puts me on 16. And then the Black Rose has second, which gives them two points, which puts them on 12. And in the lead, that's the only room that's completed, right? Yeah. So that's the cemetery. So it's good to have some cubes back. And the cemetery looks like this when it's flipped over. Nothing too crazy. I imagine it's going to be something summoning related. Summon a Colossus. Wow. It's pretty cool. Okay. So that is it. Yeah. Okay. Then we have, uh, that's it. New round. So move revealed effect to the right. So this goes away. This comes here and a new one is drawn. And it says letters of destruction. If a mage activates a green or red room, they gain one point. The black rose inflicts one damage to each mage that inflicts a red or so it's during the action phase and it comes in the middle. So that is important to remember. Also, none of these events have given the black rose any points whatsoever. So it's pretty nice. <laughs> okay, so also let's see here if the, black, if the avatar is in a green, gray, or purple room. He is in a gray room this time. So places two cubes in a room full of MBF. That's full, so it doesn't matter. That does, does nothing whatsoever. Okay, I can discard a quest card, which I will not do. Um, nothing else applies. Then study phase. Draw two cards. So I still have two cards, the Rain Totem and the Living Liquid, right? Now I have Indoctrination, which is heal up to two damage, place a cube in the, that room, uh, equal to the, place cubes in the room equal to the healing that you did. So basically you, you heal two, you put two, which is pretty nice. Or assign the Cerebral Implant upgrade to the target, it activates under your control. Okay, nice. So you basically just take over someone's. Protein Genesis, lose one point if you do summon a Colossus. Meh. Place one token, summon a Cadaver, it activates. Okay, I think that's okay. Nothing crazy. 
And then I get to draw four cards. Um, so far, it's been good in general. Technomancy has been good. Uh, alchemy, not really. Hex, not really. Oh, let's just try a hex card. It says, another mage enters a blue or purple room. That's interesting. Target that mage, convert two damage. For each damage that could not be converted, place one cube in that room. If the target has at least one assigned jinx, steal one point, inflict two damage. Dario's, uh, Kadario's element, am amulet. Okay, that's one. Let's take a look at alchemy. Marbling. Enhancements. You have to have two fires. Uh, mm. <laughs> inflict one damage to each mage. Or just inflict one damage to each mage. Okay. Or enhancement with like a C token. Place two cubes and inflict one damage. So let's see if I have any of those tokens on uh, my current spells. No. No. Yes. No. So I do have one token on the totem. So if I place the token card first, and then this one, I could place two cubes and do damage. But I don't know about that. I do shaman shamanic convert three cubes. That's really nice. That's really nice. I could make the oracle room completely mine. Or uh, each time the target enters a room, you may place one uh, cube in that room. So basically, you put a jinx on someone. That's pretty nice too. So that is three cards. And for my fourth card, I'll stay with tech. No, I have enough summons already, I think. Um, I'm at full health. Let's try Agony. Inflict one damage, convert one damage, pain one. So pain is do one damage to myself. Or inflict two damage, place one cube in a room for each damage from the black rose on the models who suffered damage due to this effect. Okay. All right, so that's submission. Okay, I'm not gonna use submission. Um, I will use Dario's Alamut Amulet because it's a trap. I like traps. Um, and then I'm gonna use Step, step Spirits because it can convert three cubes, which is pretty awesome. All right, so the next step is then that I uh, prepare two to four cards. Okay, so let's see what I can do. I don't need to heal. There's the altar card. Activate a room two spots from the target. I'm going to do that just to finish this one, the rain totem. But I don't have a totem at the moment. Oh, yes. Yeah. Place a totem. Yeah. So let's do the trap first. I want to activate that ASAP. Um, I wouldn't mind summoning another cadaver and activating it. I like the convert three. I'll put that here. It's placing, it's placing and summoning a cadaver. And then the cerebral implants. What does that do again? Cerebral. Oh, you gain one point. Okay. Never mind. I will do that as well. Here. Okay, it's going to be all about us uh, activating my minions this round. And also doing this, draw, draw three spells from your... Well, these ones will be shuffled because they're empty now. Uh, from your grimoire and discard one to your memories. But it means I can two, keep two, I have four, and then go to Black Rose Room maybe. We'll see, we'll see. Okay, so we're about to change anyway. So what you normally do is... You take all these cards that I used, you shuffle them, and you put them on the bottom for each of the mages.
So what I've noticed with avatars is the problem that they all they, you seem to be in one spot of the map, but then I imagine it's the same thing with human players because you want to attack people, right? But I think with human players, you're probably less prone to getting up in each other's faces. I'm not sure. Like you might want to step back a bit, but here it's often that they're really looking out to get you. Okay, so one, two, three, lightning. Okay. Um, yeah, I start. So I will, 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 will activate my trap. So another mage enters a blue or purple room. Um, so might be this room hopefully, or this room, hopefully. So I am going to move and activate. I have to activate alchemical laboratory. So this finishes and I can do that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, well, I'll leave this like this. I activate. So I move over here and I draw three from my grimoire, but it's empty. So I'm going to have to shuffle these. In the end, I want three shitty ones. So I get three. I want three shitty ones because then I can go to the Black Rose room maybe or whatever. So it's Draco's, oh, it's all, it's all cool. Because this one inflicts damage to target. This one lets me summon or upgrade a cadaver. And this one also does damage. So they're actually all good. Yeah, but I might not go there anyway. Anyway, I activated this, so this flips over. And then I add a second cube. So this is completed. This goes away. I get one point. And I can also inflict two damage to a model up to two spaces away. That two damage will go to Hastur and kill him. Yes. He's not protected, is he? He's not protected. So I do two. Boom. He is dead. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yeah, finally took him down. So he goes back to his room. It's yellow, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, we all get the cubes back. Uh, <laughs> almost put it at the trauma. Super traumatized. And also get his trophy, which gives me a second trophy. Okay, so he's back up to 13. Uh, there we go. All right. Um, and because, oh, I did the most damage for sure. That's four points for me. So that's 21. And then the second damage was, oh, why did I remove everything already? I didn't check. I think the second damage was, he had two. Did he have three? He damaged himself once, but it doesn't matter. Huh. I'm not sure if it was two or three. I think both of them had two, but these are like together. I think possessed had more damage. So it's gonna be four, two and one. So 13. 13. There we go. Okay, yeah, I should have checked that first. I was a bit too anxious. Okay, so um, that was not the only thing. Also, I could get to place one cube uh, in the room where I am right now. Yeah, that does nothing. Mean. <laughs> okay, but you know, being able to kill him was pretty awesome. So that was my movement, and uh, so I moved here and I activated. And because of the activation, I completed my quest, which I then solved. And I think that's not an action now. So I still have one potential action left. If I want to, I no, I activated my trap. So no, that's it. I'm done. 
And all these go away because we now go to the second, to the last moon phase. So, which is actually perfect timing because I can just take out the new uh, decks and then uh, start with those. So these go away. And they don't get mixed up either. So the game is close to ending. Because more rooms might get flipped, more people might get killed. I mean, there's no one close to dying now, is there? Because Possessed is at 7. Actually, only has 3 cubes. He's not at 7. I forgot to change it. He's only he's at 9. So this is supposed to be 3. He's at 8. So 9, 8, and uh, 13. And I'm at 10. So anyway, these missions go away. That mission is the quest, I mean. And then also the uh, the events as well. And there's the last time that I have to change any decks. And then the possessed can start with there. Ultimate moves, I guess. Moves towards towards the mage number two, the mage in the nearest room. So that will be Jugas. Oh, all right, there we go. Boom. And then uh, number two again, but of course it's going to be him again. Inflicts two damage to Yukas, who is now at six health. The target discards two spells. Of course he doesn't have any spells. For each spell discarded in this effect, the target removes one of their evocations with a value of three or less. He doesn't have any evocations, so it doesn't matter. So that was the Thorns of Frost. Okay. Yukas's turn. He suddenly turned himself into a juicy target with only six health. Number two, and then teleportation. So, number two. The room with the most cubes. Um, there's five here. So that's where it teleports to. Hup. Wait, did he... He just moved in here, right? From the throne room? Did he not? Yes. And my guy is there. So he did three damage to him. Boom. So he's at six health as well. Yeah. Um, okay. So... Yeah, anyway, he arrives there. Places one vortex in the... And there's only one there, it doesn't matter. And then he does number one, the room with the most mages. So it's going to be this one because he only has a has a range of one. So he goes here, inflicts three damage to the room. Ouch. Oh, by the way, my Colossus hit him. So I get a point. But my Colossus is suddenly... Uh, we're talking about Yukas. He doesn't have enough cubes. He only does two damage to, I guess if he has to prioritize, it's gonna be him. But then because he ran out, uh, like I said, if he doesn't have any cubes, I just stop whatever action happens and he replaces it. He's not gonna do his ultimate. He's just going to do the action to get his cubes back to one. So he's gonna get six back because he's, he's using the special action. So he was here and he teleported, but that was a physical action. So instead of teleportation, I'm just going to use his physical action to get six of his cubes back because he only had to, remember? So two, four, five. So he gets six cubes back from his traumatization there. So then when he um, attacks the room, he actually does three damage here. So there's three left and has three damage to my Colossus as well. And he kills my cadaver. There we go. Okay. Um, 
and then he does his special action. Um, but yeah, he doesn't have any cubes to, well, he does have two cubes to do it. Um, and he gets another card. So his special action is put a vortex there and then put a cube wherever there are vortexes. So uh, he's gonna put cubes wherever there are the most cubes with a vortex. So this is five, so I put one here. And this is four, he'll put one there. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it makes no difference if it's here or here. Um, yeah. So, okay, then he gets a new card. But in the new card, if there's a physical collection, he's going to mend again because he ran out of cubes again. He does have physical, so I'm going to ignore the top part and take five cubes back. And then it says um, activates target room without generating any effect, but he doesn't do it because he didn't teleport. Um, he didn't go anywhere. So then it says each mage two sp spots from the target loses one point. So he got the six back, so we ignore the first part. And then it says activates target room without uh, generating any effect. Uh, I guess the target room is just the room where he's in because it says it's room zero. If he does, draws and solves one quest for the current moon. So he does this. And he gets two points. Uh, Yukas does. And then it says um, each mage two spots from where he is. So that's everyone except for him because he says to come out. Loses one point. So up and uh, up. Each mage from the target discards one teleport, uh, one vortex token, but no one has a vortex token, so it doesn't matter. Okay, that was Yukas taking away points from people. How? Utterly and totally rude. Okay, then it's his turn. He just flips his card, but nothing happens because he just has to get out and he teleports to the Black Rose room. And then it's my turn. Um, oh, did anyone enter a blue or purple room? No, right? No. So if I want that to happen, I think I have to move myself, but um, okay. So I'm still over here. And both these are useful in places that are finished or about to finish. So I have the convert three. I have the place one cube, seven a cadaver, it activates. Um, huh. Someone a cadaver activates. A cadaver does two points of damage. So if I have him attack the possessed, it'll almost kill the possessed. But if I don't move at all and I just do command, then um, I can kill him immediately with him. And. Um, I would have the majority of damage too, because at the moment it's five to four. But if I kill him, I get four points, which would put me on 25. And Yukas would be at 17. Um, but then I can't move anymore. And then the, oh, the converting is up to two rooms away. That's really good, actually. That's really good, actually. Yeah, that's really good. Okay, that's what I'll do. And placing the one is also two, two away. Okay, so I will command my guy who will attack this guy for three damage. Chop, chop, chop. The possessed is liberated from the spirit. It's dead and I have two, four, six, seven against the five of Yukas. So I get four points, which is 25. And then Yukas gets two, it's 17. Um, 
and then we get our cubes back. There we go, and then uh, the possessed goes back to his room. Um, that's it. Uh, so that was my command action. And I get a token as well, because I finished him off. And then um, I can either do Protein Genesis or the Step Spirit. I'll do Protein Genesis, which means I can place a cube up to two rooms away. So I'll put a cube here and yet two. And then summon a cadaver, it activates, can also be up to two away. Um, so the cadaver will come here, of course. Uh, attack Yukus for two. And Yukus is only protected by spell, not by damage. So two damage for Yukus, so he's down to four. Um, so my cadaver is here. So that's the end of my turn. Then it is the possessed. They will just take a card and get out. So they can move up to two. So the possessed uh, choose a room. The room with the most mages inside. That's all a tie. The most models inside is over there. They can move two, so they just go back to the room where they came from. Revenge. But because he enters, he immediately gets hit by three damage because of my <laughs> because of my colossus. <laughs> it's uh, very unfortunate there, possessed. You're almost not acting like yourself, huh? Anyway, so boom, done. Jukas went almost dead. Places himself in the Black Rose Room. Hup. Places one Vortex there, but there's already one there, so it doesn't matter. And then uh, places a cube there. I could actually complete the Black Rose Room with my Step Spirit. I could add three cubes, but then I would tie with the Possessed. And then we both get one point less. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's first see what happens. Uh, number three for Yukas, because he's his range is pretty far. The mage who has the most uh, tokens on their mage card, so nobody. Um, yeah, because no spells were really done, as far as I can tell. Um, the mage who has the most points, so it basically goes after me, and he can reach me, because I'm two away. Inflicts three damage. And then it says, if the target suffers damage due to this effect, they lose one point. Okay. Done. And then it's Hastur. Okay, so he does a spell, which means he will take this token. Targets the, 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 the evocation with the highest damage value in the lodge. So that'll be my Colossus. It activates under the control of the Black Rose with plus two power. So it does five damage. Trauma five on the owner of the target. Great. So I lose five cubes. <sighs> Assigns a target uh, a token to the owner of the target. Yeah. So basically, it. it this one activates. I think it's going to be bad news for the possessed. Can the evocation attack a mage by moving or same it is? Yes. The target is the closest mage. Yes. So he's going to womp it for five damage. So that's Black Rose damage, not mine. So five. So there's only four left. Only four left. <laughs> he just came out and he just got hammered on like crazy. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, that was his turn. That's my turn. 
I suddenly I only have two cubes left and I can't do the special action because I don't have physical stuff left. So my convert three, I, can, oh, I, I cannot convert three, I can only convert two. So that's what I'll do. I'll take these two and I'll convert it to mine. Um, so that's step spirit done. It's the only thing that I can do. And that only indoctrination afterwards. Okay, so the last turn for Obsessed. They've had a really bad round. So, um, nobody went into a blue or no. <laughs> Three. Three for Obsessed. The room with the most mages inside. Um, so it goes to the Black Rose room. Inflicts three damage to the room, so but they don't have enough. So, um, yeah, I just do three damage to whoever, whoever was. It's a target. Uh, the mage with the most health. So that would be here. Hastur. So he would be at 10, right? Yeah. Okay, and then places one cube, but he, had, he ran out of cubes. And then he gets another card, but the other card will make, a, make it do that he gets his tokens back. So four, five, six. Um, and then it also says that he inflicts one damage and converts one damage and moves towards a green room. Um, but because he changed that, um, yeah, I guess just like we did before, the the action doesn't happen. Oh, but he has one physical action here, so he can he can't he can't do the previous stuff because he doesn't have the cubes so he does do that but yeah, nothing else okay then the last turn for yukas number one teleportation the room with the most but he's already there so he's just going to stay where he is places a vortex token there's no vortex token there so he can put it Number three, the target discards, so number three, the targets. The mage has the most uh, vortexes on a card. That would be, he focuses Hastur. Uh, the target discards a token, so they do. If they do, the black rose, so he gains two points. So he's at 19. And then uh, draw one event. Pricey Revival. It's a Yuka's one, actually. Um, when a mage is placed in their cell, that mage gains one point. Yeah, always. And once it goes away, the Black Rose gets a point. So if someone dies, they get a point. Okay. Um, all right. Hastur for his last turn. He will put a cube down. There he is. Three, so it looks like he's going to give people some stuff back. But it says mend. So three, the mage with the fewest tokens, but we all have a token. Actually, both of them don't have a token because they use the uh, the ability. Um, actually, he shouldn't have been able to do it twice, but whatever. Um, with the fewest tokens was number three, right? If tied, the mage with the most points. So it's Yukas. So he is going to mend five, but he doesn't have any tokens. <laughs> and then his special ability happens, which is assign one token to each one in his room. So basically he just gives the tokens back to them. The ones that I just removed, he cut it back. All right, so hub and hub. And that's it. 
trauma three on each of them. Now, trauma three on each of them. So, that's especially bad for the possessed. Mucus, I guess, can still be with it a bit. And then finally, it says moves towards the Black Rose room, but he's already there, so it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, and then it's me with my final turn. Uh, assign the cerebral implant, upgrade to the target, and it activates under your control. So I, I attach it to my cadaver. So um, he, does, uh, he activates, so he's going to go to this room. And he's going to do two damage to nobody because I have no cubes. Anyway, he's going to be there for when I do have cubes eventually. Ah, oh, so annoying. I'm not having cubes. So that's the end of the round again. Um, we have the evocations, but nothing much happens because I don't have any cubes. But I am going to put this one in the Black Rose room because if these guys are going to always come back, they'll just get chopped up by him. Um, so yeah, nothing really happens there. Uh, this so let's clean up phase then. So everybody with a token gives a trophy to you know who. So he collects three trophies again, Hastur. Everybody with vortexes loses them, but they're already removed, so that's fine. Um, anything else? I don't think so. Uh, no rooms are ready to be flipped. A lot of them are close, but none of them are ready. Uh, yeah, that's it. So then, the new round, the events move to the right. So this goes here, this goes here, this goes here. Oh, we forgot. If a mage activates a green or red room, they gain one point. Okay, I activated one red room. Nobody else did anything else. So I'm supposed to get one point. And then, the Black Rose affects one damage to each mage that activates that room, so they do one damage to me. Right. And then when a mage is placed in their cell, that means okay. So a new event. Each mage with at least one damage of the Black Rose loses one point. Great. So Possessed loses one point. I lose one point, and Jukas, nothing. All right, then, um, boom, boom, boom. I need to take a new quest, forcibly. So my quest is Surrender of Power. After you resolve the Black Room Ruse effect, uh, give a forgotten spell in your hand to the target. The target adds that card to their hand if you do solve this quest. Okay, that's not doable because I'm not playing with human players. So next one. Master of Death. Reveal this card after a mage who has at least one of your uh, damage on their mage sheet is defeated. Place one cube on this card. So I basically have to kill three people. Wow. And then I can get three trophies. That's pretty impossible. Okay. Um, done. And then I can draw two from my Grimmar, and it is assembly line, which is nice. And my forgotten card, forgotten spell, cool. And then I get to draw uh, cards. I do have seven spells now. So the cards that I'm drawing, I'm going to have to get rid of several of them. Okay, let's do a hex. Another mage resolve the effect of a room. Target that mage, activate the same room even if it is used. Assign the Oblivion Jinx to the target. I'll check what that is in a second. Uh, another mage with at least one assigned Jinx resolve the effect of a room. Target that mage, activate the same room even if it is used. Convert three damage, gain one point. Okay, so Oblivion, right? So that's, oh, first of all, I should get rid of all this. Actually, this was not activated, but I decide to remove it anyway. It's not that good if it's not human players. Uh, so yeah. Here. Um, so we have this one. And the Oblivion Jinx is here. 
When you place a cube, place one cube less and place one cube on this card. Oh, okay. It's not bad. It's good for Jukas. <laughs> um, to suffocation, by the way. I'll do... Shamanic. It's protection, finally. A spell targets you or you are about to suffer its effect. Ignore that spell's effect, summon a totem. Or uh, you're about to suffer a, a, its effect of a spell. A trap spell, actually, this one. Ignore that spell's effect, summon a totem uh, in a room, gain one point. But they don't use traps, so it's fine. But I like the, the totem card, though. Um, I will do Technomancy. Nefarious Evolution. Remove one of your undead. If you do, summon a Colossus in a room uh, from a target. And then place one cube in a room from the target. If the target has an assigned upgrade, it activates in your control. So basically you put a cube in a room, any room where you have a minion, and then you can, you, you can control it, even if it's not your minion. It's really nice. And then I'll do Agony. Inflict one, uh, it's the same as before. Uh, submission, yeah, so I don't want that. All right, so of these three, I think I'll let go of suff Suffocation. Even though Oblivion's funny, I'm going to leave it. I like Nefarious Evolution and Earth Totem much better. And then I also have to discard down to seven, uh, I believe. Oh no, eight. Eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm gonna get rid of living living liquid. It's how you heal yourself. I don't really need that. Okay, so I have a lot of really good ones. Um I have some people who are close to dying and I can convert their their stuff. So at this point I wanna do the inflict four. But I don't have any cubes, remember? I'm going to have to get cubes from our good friend. Um, assembly line I don't really need at the moment, so I can be ignored. Both of those can be ignored. Um, I do want the acid blood because it's inflicting damage. But I can use it, uh, yeah, this one. Um, this is protection, right? So on a totem, Draco's skin. We'll put Draco's skin here, so when they enter my room, they get damaged. And then what do we want to finish with? Um, Nefarious evolution, so I can activate one and do damage. Okay, cool. I'm feeling pretty good about this. Um, so we have to shuffle these. Put them underneath. I think it's gonna end this round. But problem is avatars like Yukus take points away from you. So I'm gonna have to get, I think at least to 33. And able to finish to be able to finish the game. And then this one. Okay, so I start. And first of all, I have to do the uh, the Hastur action where I re remove the token, give it back to him. And I meant six, so I get six of them back. Four, five, six. There we go. And then move up to one. And I can place two tokens. So I go to Sanctuary and I place two tokens. It's three points, but it's better than no points. Um, okay, so that's done. That was a, a physical action, of course. And then um, I can inflict four damage and instantly kill the possessed. 
and then convert two to each other mage. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, okay, I should uh, move that one, three, one and two. So I move that, I inflict four damage to the possessed, or I can do four damage to Yukas. Um, because I think I'm going to do Yukas. I think he's more annoying because it's three, five, seven. Yeah, four damage to Yukas. So I hit Yukas with four, which means he dies. So I get all my shit back. Sorry, get all my stuff back. There we go. These two also go back to them. I have the most points and most damage. So I have four, so that's 28. And the possessed get two, so that's 13. Uh, Yukas flies back to his room. Up. Um, because I finished him off, I get a token. Um, and that's, that's that. Uh, and then convert two with each other mage. So two of mine, two are removed, and two of mine, and two are removed. There we go. All right, so that was my first turn. Um, I didn't activate Draco's skin, and maybe I should have, but we'll see. Okay, so, uh, oh, and after a mage who has at least one of your damage on their mage sheet is defeated, place one cube on this card. There we go. Okay, Yukas just reveals and then remove, uh, what is it, one spot only? Yeah, we just move one spot. There we go. And then it's Hastur. Okay, first of all, he puts a cube there. And then gain one point for each mage who has a token assigned. So he's going to get two points. Black Rose is 14. Trauma four on each mage who does not have one assigned. Oh my god, really? It's always taking away my cubes, man. And I don't have a token, so I can't even get my cubes back. Um, yeah. So my uh, and then it also says moves towards a room. Um, number one. So which room does he move to? For the most mages, yeah, but he's, he's already there. So nothing changes really. Okay, so my turn then. The problem is I have, don't have cubes. All my cubes are stuck and I can't mend. So um, that is a problem. That is a problem. I have to wait for him to give me a token. I have to wait for other people to kill other people before I can get stuff. But on my turn, I can, of course, activate Draco's skin, even though people can easily avoid that. I can go, um, I can move, but I prefer not to for now. I think I'll just do that. So, uh, Did the possessed not move? Oh, the possessed didn't move. Oh no, it didn't move, I just skipped them. Okay, the possessed, their first one is two, moves towards a mage. Um, so nothing much would have changed to be honest, but uh, number two is the room with the most, this, this is Huster, not him. Number two. Mage in the nearest room, but that's of course going to be there, so it doesn't really matter. And then he will look for a certain one, and the mage with the most points, but um, it's just going to be him because no longer tied, there's nobody else there. So he inflicts two damage. Great, for number two, first of all, is uh, the mage in the nearest room, so it's going to be him, and then he does it again, the mage in the nearest room, up. 
inflicts two damage. So there's two damage to him, which is nice, but it's definitely not enough because he still has eight health. So it's going to be a while before he dies. Uh, the target is one point for each health not convert. Oh yeah, converts one health, one damage. So I get a cube back. Yay! Um, the target loses one point for each health not con damage not converted to this, but he converted everything. So it's fine. Okay, that's it. That was him, and now it's him again. But actually, that means that on my turn I could have had one cube, but it doesn't matter. No, I mean, I can go here, do Acid Blood, and complete it at least. Okay, Explosion of Dark Petals. So they put a cube wherever they are. Oh, they finished the room. Wow, okay. Inflicts two damage to each model from the target. So everybody gets two damage, basically. Wow. It's a lightning spell, but he's gonna he has protection. So let's first do well he only has three damage. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um okay, let's see the target. The mage with the most health. So it's gonna be me, is it? No, I've got six. He's got eight. So he does two damage to him. So it's down to six, and then because I have six as well, and Hastur has full health actually, so Hastur is supposed to get two of those hits, but he has protection. So, what does this protection do? Gains one point for each health suffered, so he gets two points. Hastur is coming. He's really coming. I'm gonna have to. It sounds weird, but I'm gonna have to watch out for him because he's really coming. I don't trust it. No, sir, I don't. Okay, so that's their turn done, right? Yeah. So Hastur's turn, second turn. Upside down. Places himself in the throne room. Is that the action phase? If a mage activates a green or a or red room, well, this hasn't happened yet. Pays himself in the, in the throne room, boom. Places one vortex there, done. Places a cube there, done. And then number two. Number two, uh, the room with the most cubes not placed by him which of course is there actually. So that's going to be his target. He converts three. So these three go away and become his. See, I'm telling you, he's coming. Places one cube for each not converted due to this effect. Well, it's going to gain one point. Okay. So nothing really happens there then. Okay, so if he wins this, which he has the most at the moment, he'll have six points. Six points plus 22 is 28. That means he ties with me where I am right now. And I'm handicapped because of the one cube. All right, Hastur, give me a token, man. Give me a token. Moves towards the Black Rose room. He's already there. Trauma five on each uh, mage. Wow. So one, one, <laughs> and one. Everybody lost everything. Each mage. Each mage who does not have a token assigned loses one point. Yeah, great. Everybody else has a token. Yeah. And then he gets another card. Just give me a token, man. Give me a chance to get my stuff back. Moves towards a room. It's probably going to be the same room again, isn't it? The room with the most mages. Uh, no, it's tied, I guess. I mean, he doesn't count himself, right? 
The room with the most models. Okay, that's where he is. Then trauma three on each mage. Oh, wait a minute. The last one. Is it every mage? The whole lodge? Yes. Oh, shoot. Okay, trauma three on each mage in one spot. So basically them. But it doesn't matter. Assigns a token to each one from the target. No. Each mage who does not have one assigned loses one point. Oh, I was about to say I finally got one, but I didn't. I lose another point. This guy just keeps taking away my points. So I can do acid blood, but I can't do acid blood. And if I do momentum, I cannot activate a room. You just move one. Okay, so, and if I do, yeah, if I do, if I do, if I do. Okay, so basically I'm doing momentum. I'm discarding acid blood. I move here. Just to fill this room up as well to get as many points as I can, regardless of the other stuff that's happening right now. And now it's the last turn for the obsessed already. Moves towards a blue room. I don't have that trap anymore. So there's only a blue room. Oracle room is here. I think it's probably going to be that. Possessed. Let's see. Moves towards the room. Um, the most mages inside. So the blue with the most mages. So it's here. They move twice. So yeah, it's in my room. So normally this trap springs, but it's just, just three damage, but there's no damage because I have cubes, but I can move in one spot. I move him in the room with him. And then it says uh, each mage, uh, the whole lodge, um, discards two spells from their hand. So I have to discard two spells from my hand. I'm gonna get rid of the assembly lines. And then he gets another card, moves towards a red room. Um, now it's going to be more difficult. The most models, there's no models in there. Um, the room with the most cubes placed in it. No, so the arena. So it goes to the arena. Activates target room without generating any effect. Um, so he gains one point because of that, because he activated that room, because of the event. And it also says, he also takes one damage from the black room, from the black rose. So he's down to three. Okay. Draw and solves one quest of the current room. And that is um, three points for him. Great. Suddenly this is completely dragging out. Okay, Yukas, can you do something? Oh, but, all right. So technically he should not have moved towards that room. Um, he should not get the three points because like I said, if they don't have cubes, they do the, the, the action. So then here, this action would not have happened. So he stays here and he gets six cubes and he loses his token. Same thing for me, for, for that guy over there, top doesn't happen because he has no cubes so he just takes back only four of his cubes his cubes are everywhere four of his cubes and then he does the second part which means uh, two and two is he chooses a target 
the room with the most uh, tokens not placed by him. So I guess it would be here as a tie. The room with the most cubes, so that yeah, he stays there then, or he goes there. Does he go there? No, he's just in range. Oh, and he does his special ability. Okay, so that basically means um, he places one vortex there, but there's already one. And then he places a cube in each room with a vortex. So it's gonna be just the ones that have the most already. That's where he's gonna add one. And he's gonna run out of cubes again. So he puts one here, and he puts one here, here, and here. Didn't I do a spell? I'm supposed to have this. Um, and actually there's not supposed to be one here because, no, did he do a spell when he was there? Yeah. So this is supposed to be with him. So this one, he still has. Yeah, sometimes I forget to remove it. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, whatever. Okay. So, and then it says take another card. And oh, oh it says, more importantly, every room that's finished flips. So, this one is finished. So, three cubes for you, two cubes for me. And I get three points. So, 29. And um, the possessed get one. Yeah. So, that's Sanctuary. And the skill of Sanctuary is Heal 3 or Heal 3 of Model. Okay, and then um, fourth, he's gonna get a ton of points. This one finishes, so. And when it finishes with his token inside, he gets two points. But then is uh, the token removed? It remains, okay. So he has the most, so that's six plus two, eight points. He's at 30. Suddenly he's winning. Okay, so the three go here. Two go here. Three go here. Two go there. Black Rose Room. And that action is discard three spells. If you do, draw two forgotten spells, keep one and forget and uh, discard the other. Yeah, and then he gets the points for here too. Oh, sorry, for here. And there's a token there, so he gets another six points. So it's 36. All because of Hastur, who said, hey, well, not just because of him, also because of me not taking care of my cubes. It literally says in the, in the manual, that you have to be careful where you put your cubes. So the arena, the skill there is cast your next ready spell. So you can do more than one in one go. Um, I'm gonna get potentially five points here though, but it's not enough. Okay, so that was him, but it said Draw another card. Oh my god. Lucas is killing me here. Okay, so target one. The room with the most mages. Uh, if tied, the room with no vortex. All three of them are tied. The room with the most cubes. Also tied. So, because it says one, these cubes are, are tied, right? When the, in the past, he said in the room with the most cubes not placed by the black, well, not placed by him. 
So I guess he's going to be here and be annoying. And then he does the whole thing again. Oh my god. He puts another one in here. And then he puts a cube wherever he has a vortex. Oh wow. That's just... I was able to slow, slow him down a little bit, but now it's just ridiculous. So it's one. Two. Three. That's it. Um, and then this one flips over immediately. So I get four, and he also gets four because he put this there just now. So I don't even come closer. So it's 33, and he has now 40. I do get all my cubes back. It's a little bit late for that, I think. Oracle room. Uh, the Oracle Room, what does it do? As a mage, you can search for one spell in your grimoire or your memories and draw it and then you shuffle. So basically you can get an old spell back. Oh, okay, and then he inflicts three damage. Did he move? Because he's not supposed to move, actually. He did move, but he's not supposed to move. He was here. Uh, he inflicts three damage to me. And then places one token for each model that suffered at least one damage due to his this effect. For each model, so just one then. That was deflagration. Okay then. So up. All right, and then we have house two. Right, rains and pours, man. A draw and resolve one quest of the current moon. So I guess three points for house two. So a seventeen. Place three cubes where he is but it doesn't matter there's no place there trauma five on each mage in his room nothing assigns a token to each mage in his room nothing and then moves towards a room according to one the room with the most mages so basically next door he's here okay done but those are the turn their turns are done right yeah so i still have one move and I still have the Nefarious Evolution, which is good because I can place one token in a room. And um, in that room, well, I can activate one of my guys, for example, put a token. Well, putting a token is irrelevant. I mean, I can put here, which is going to give me one point, which is not really useful. I just need to kill people. So I could use this as command and move in and kill the possessed and um, and then hit him again and then the evocation phase hit him again uh, and then potentially have like what yeah, another eight points that should be good so let's do because they're finished, right? So I'm going to do evocation. Oh, sorry, I'm going to do command. So he walks in here and he hits him for three, which also gives me a point. So up, he hits him for three, which kills him. And I have the most. So I get four points, which gives me 38. And uh, the black rose gets two points. So 19. Um, so we all get the cubes back as well. And because it was the final blow, I get the trophy. And this guy goes back to his room. Um, okay. Then I do this. 
uh, activates. Um, no, it says place one in the in the in the room. So here, I place one here, and then it says if the target has an assigned upgrade, which it does. Uh, it activates under your control. So basically, I activate him. He hits him for three, which lowers him to four health. And um, I get one point for damaging him. Then it's, that's the end of the round. It's finished. Then we do the evocation. I'm the only ones with evocation. So this one attacks Hastur again for four damage, but obviously, um, oh, that's a, yeah, for, for three damage actually, sorry, for three damage and one point. And then this one moves in. He has an upgrade where you also get the points, so it is two damage, but he only had one life left, so just one damage, but one point for damaging him. And then he dies as well. So I have more damage than the possessed, so I get four points, which puts me on 40, uh, 45 actually, and then two points for the back rows, uh, sorry, for the possessed. And um, that's it. Then no more evocations to do, no more rooms to flip. No, done. It's not the end of the game yet, because now we look at the end game scoring. Also at the end, um, this gets discarded. Whoever has a token has to give him a token. So they both, that one has a token. So he has to give one of his trophies to Hastur. And because I killed Hastur, I get one of his trophies. All right, so let's see, end game scoring. First of all, solved quests. Four points for whoever has the most solved quests. So. Possessed has three. Uh, Jukas has three. Hastur has three. So they're all tied. Um, so all of them get three points. So three, three, three. And for me, uh, I just get one point. And then trophy tokens, whoever has the most. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. He has three, six, eight. So the black rose gets four points, which is puts them on 26. I am sure that I'm second. I am. So that gives me two points. So 13. And uh, participation, so everybody else gets one point because everybody else killed at least one person. Oh, the possessed killed no one or didn't didn't uh, do have a final blow, killing blow. Okay, so that's it then. The crown token holder gets one point, but that's kind of silly. Oh, that was a long game. <laughs> so this is... Uh, Solo, uh, I can tell you that it plays very differently with different avatars. Because see, you, you, Yukas is pretty crazy with how he quickly spreads everything. And you can also see when you play solo with that many characters, it's quite a lot to uh, remember and everything. Um, and the avatars do tend to creep to the same spots because like not every room is used i do believe with more players that would be you know used in a better way maybe if you play with five to six and there's two extra avatars it might spread out a bit more but i don't really think so because many of them are always like target a mage so 
Yeah, I think that's that's maybe something that's missing. Um, that they don't necessarily... They do sometimes go to a room and target it, but then it's always like, depending if there's cubes there already. So most of it happened here, as you can see. But of course, once a room is built, they tend to shy away from it. They always go to where the other ones are. So they do move around, but yeah. But I don't know. I don't know how, how you guys see it. It's been a very long video. I don't know how many people are going to reach till the end. But um, but yeah, I like it a lot. It's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I want to play it with real people as well. See see how that works uh, works out and um, but so far I'm happy with the, with all the avatars and the possibilities. Of course, it's a shame there's no actual rule set of how to play with them. Um, and if you play them fully according to Black Rose rules, then they're all constantly here. Like if you don't send them to their room and everything, then they're even more clustered. By sending them to their room, sometimes you know they might branch out a bit more to people who just came out of their room or whatever um but yeah but it's cool of course that they target each other that way um and i guess you could control two characters and play against two avatars maybe like two versus two or whatever but i like how all three avatars are very different like how hostude is so annoying taking all the cubes away but then Yukas with his vortexes, um, he has spells that come out that do more damage if you have vortex tokens. Um, but the fact that he can quickly get all these rooms ready and get all the points, because he almost he had me sweating there for a moment. And then um, the possessed, yeah, the possessed is just okay. Feels more like a a beginner because they don't have a special power on their card. The other two do, and that makes them very different. Yeah. Like I said, I enjoy it, um, but uh, it's been a long session. I, uh, I'm gonna go to bed. Thank you very much for watching. Um, there might be errors that I that I performed because it's a lot to to focus on and it's late. But uh, I hope it gave you an idea of how it works and what the possibilities are. I know normally I can play a lot more efficiently if I choose the schools that. Would help me more but i wanted to show you guys uh more variety so anyway that's it um i'll see you all in the next video uh, my name is joachim and i always will be just so many games all the time bye, -bye.